Hello guys. How are you all? Welcome to God of Fiction. So in this video we will see what if Naruto and Rias Grammarie were become couple and get married. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now without any further ado, let's begin the story. There has to be something. In the past three years, the heiress of the Grammarie family had observed the people of Kuo Town, a small but modern town in Japan. She watched the farmers take in harvest in the outskirts, salarymen stress over their papers in the subways and buses, students going from school to cram school, and housewives shop in the malls and boutiques in droves. In three years, she had not seen a single person without fault, without flaw. Farmers lie about their products, salarymen can be bribed, students cheat at school, and housewives cheat on their husbands. Rias tried not to generalize, not every person had the same fault, but ultimately, they all had one, usually more. All except one person, Uzumaki Naruto. Rias had first met Naruto during her first year at Kuo Academy, the largest and most prestigious high school in Kuo City. As the school was personally funded by the Grammarie family, Rias felt that it was her responsibility to watch over the student body. Back then, Naruto was just another person she would smile at and greet upon passing, he had yet to become interesting. As one after and another proved to Rias that humans were no better than anything else, Naruto refused to budge. The young man was polite and courteous, but Rias was determined that it was only an act. As time went on, Rias started to pay him extra attention, she sat behind him in class, and found that he never once cheated on his work, never once lazed in his work ethic, never once bothered anyone else. Not only that, but he never once refused to help others. Boys and girls would line up before him, asking, sometimes begging for his answers, or even to copy his work. He would then teach them the material himself, not once giving in to his peers' temptations. Soon, he became the only person in the entire school that Rias could not figure out. Against her own good judgment, Rias found herself following her classmate after school. Even when duties called, she sent her familiar to trail behind him. She was becoming more determined to discover his true persona by the day. Her political training reminded Rias to find out more about Naruto's personal life, and she complied her data. She found that Naruto lived alone, apparently orphaned since birth. He had left his foster home the day he turned 14 and moved into a small apartment close to the school. He shopped for himself, cooked for himself, and cleaned after himself. Every day, he'd wake in the morning, make himself a large breakfast and a small lunch for school, and leave for school in the cleanest and meticulous school uniform. He was popular in school for his generosity and kindness, so many people would approach him. He'd mingle among classmates and teachers, adored by all. After school, he'd head home, foregoing cram school because of his flawless grades. After some brief homework, he'd sleep fully onto the next morning. This pattern went on for an entire year until Rias finally found an anomaly. Just after the end of their junior year, Naruto spent a lot of money on an order online. Rias had her reclusive computer genius, Gasper hack into his computer and figured out all his orders. It was highly unusual. Naruto had apparently forged the company ID of the local pharmacy and ordered a near truckload of pharmaceuticals to his personal address. Rias had thought she'd hit the jackpot. Naruto was using his intellect and chemistry to make some sort of addicting drug to sell to his many friends in school. Rias had her phone on the ready as she watched Naruto sort through his order, but once again, she was surprised. Oh, come on, somehow. Naruto had found that a large group of homeless people lived at the very edge of the city. There were people who were simply down in the dumps and had rotten luck, but there were also some dangerous personalities there. Many were drug addicts that would do anything for another fix, or the cash that would give them another fix. There were convicts, thieves, even pimps. But somehow, Naruto acted just as he would to his friends with these people, and oddly enough, they felt relaxed and comfortable around him. So for the entire summer, instead of partying with his friends at the beach or going on dates with the many girls who found him cute and sexy, Naruto spent his sunny days giving checkups to the homeless, and prescribing medicine to most of them. Day after day, he would be there at first light, he had a few homeless men help him stash his medication inside a storage unit, and not once had people tried to steal from him. For some ungodly reason that remained a mystery to Rias, everyone around Naruto found it easy to trust and believe in him, and soon, he saved every person that needed his help. He was amazing at diagnostics. Rias had never once seen him discern something wrong. It was as if his eyes could see into his patients' bodies. This went on for another six months, and Rias kept watching him day after day. But she could no longer handle it, and finally decided to talk to him. Good morning, 
Naruto-san. The grammary heiress could see the genuine surprise in her subject's eyes, but merely continued to smile. It was still early in the morning, and Naruto was making his way to school. The street was mostly empty, with stores just opening for business, giving Rias a nice opportunity to gather some information in peace. How are you today? Very good, Rias-san. Thank you for asking. Rias knew she needed to speak more, you know, we've been acquaintances for a long time now, and I want to know more about you. Would you mind if we walked to school together this morning? I would like to talk to you. Of course, Rias san It would be my pleasure. Now, Rias had certain expectations. Having grown up as a princess in the underworld she had grown accustomed to fake smiles and false courtesy, but she found none with Naruto. And after a few years in the human world with a devil's body, she had grown sensitive to when men would ogle her, when their eyes would sneak a peek at her s, but Naruto never did. That just made Rias want to know Naruto even more. So for the remaining months of the year, Rias spent nearly every morning walking to school with Naruto, deepening their conversations with each passing day. Courteous smiles changed to affectionate grins, handshakes changed to small hugs, and small talk became personal chats. Rias and found out that Naruto's mother had died on the birthing bed, and he had never met his father. He did not leave his foster home because of his dislike of them, but he wanted to become more independent, in fact, he still had frequent letter communication with his foster parents. It took a few months, but Naruto finally told Rias of his small, personal, and highly illegal clinic at the edge of town, and his regular clients, the homeless population. It took another month, but Naruto brought Rias to his clinic and she acted as his nurse for the entire day. Once a month turned into once a week, then every other day, then every day. By the end of their second year, the people who would visit the clinic had grown accustomed to seeing her, and would feel just as comfortable with her as they would be with Naruto. Rias had grown close to Naruto, despite still watching his every move, but soon she found that she had become desperate in discovering something bad of Naruto, needing to see if he was really the man she had grown to believe in. She started to believe that he truly had a heart of gold, and nothing was fake. So far, he had not disappointed her. She had fallen into his trap, like every other person around him. Unknowingly and almost ominously, Naruto had wormed his way into her life, and the worst part was that she had initiated everything. Rias Grammary was irritated, angry, and exhausted. Why is he so irresistible? Uzumaki Naruto was horrified. You can do this. His heart was pounding in his chest and there was a lump in his throat. His stomach was doing backflips and his hands couldn't stop shaking. He had already drunk three glasses of ice cold water and fanned himself for the past ten minutes, but he couldn't stop sweating, he had never been so nervous. Even when he had to make life changing decisions at his clinic, he didn't feel so troubled. It goes to prove just how inexperienced he was with such a thing. Good morning, Naruto. Rias had abandoned the use of any formal honorifics months ago, ready for today's test. As per usual, Rias appeared on the crossroad that led to their school. Her luscious red hair fell onto her back like a river of rubies, glistening in the morning sunlight. There was a soft twinkle in her dark green eyes as she smiled at him with that beautiful little smirk that revealed her dimples. Naruto felt his heart pound against his chest at her melodic voice. Gee good morning, Rias chan Rias raised a brow, are you feeling alright? Naruto needed to get everything off his chest as soon as possible, so he immediately stood tall. Rias chan I'm wondering, he trailed off as his eyes shifted from her eyes to the ground, wondering, wondering if you would be interested. The girl stepped closer, interested in what? Interested in, he felt out of breath as he forced out the rest, interested in going on a date with me. Rias' eyes widened as she failed to give a response, but her desire was starting to burn in her heart. Naruto took a deep breath and gathered his courage again, will you go on a date with me? He truly had no idea what to expect and couldn't remotely imagine how Rias would react. He had tried to play out the situation in his mind, but he couldn't begin to comprehend Rias' thoughts. In the end, there were only two possible answers, yes or no but for the life of him there was no way he could have possibly predicted such a reaction. It was like a dam had been tore open and everything came pouring out. Rias suddenly pushed Naruto against the nearest wall and pressed her lips against his. She pressed herself against his chest and wrapped her arms around his neck, pulling him into the deepest possible. Her tongue forced its way into his mouth and wrestled his tongue into submission, leaving him weak in the knees. He nearly fell to the ground, but didn't need to as Rias pushed him down onto the ground. She straddled his hips and continued to ravage his mouth, not stopping for another full minute. When she pulled away, both were short of breath, but she couldn't help but moan. You are a good man, Naruto. 
Rias hungrily ate him again before pulling away while sucking his lower lip, a good person. You don't do anything wrong, you have strong morals. You help anyone who needs you. You're just the perfect example of a perfect human being. She ate him again and barely pulled away, leaving her lips to tickle his. It makes me want to corrupt you. W what? Naruto's mind was blank, and had been ever since Rias took control. You're too good a person. I don't know why, but it makes you so irresistible. Rias rested her entire body onto Naruto's, disregarding the fact that they were in public. I want to see your desires, your needs. No matter how much I reason to myself, how much I try to resist, it doesn't matter. You are driving me insane, Naruto. There is just something about you that makes every cell in my body call out to you, makes my entire being want you. R. Rias, I'm going to make you mine, Naruto. Like most others his age, Naruto had wondered about the girls in his life. After all, Enrolling in a high school where the girls overwhelmingly outnumbered the boys did little to stop his imagination. Many of his fellow classmates had discussed in length the wonder and mystery that was the fairer sex. Naruto didn't blame them at all, he had been quite attentive in those discussions. They were all going through puberty and their hormones were flying about, Naruto could literally see them. It was only normal that they start thinking and imagining about girls, especially ones as beautiful as their schoolmates. More than once had Naruto wondered about his future girlfriend, about her personality, appearance and how much he'd love her. He'd think about the things he'd say to make her fall for him, the places he'd show to her to share some moments, about the times he'd lean in in her. There were several times when Naruto felt only second place in the school was because of his thoughts on girls. It goes to show how much it bothered him. But even in his wildest imagination, Naruto would have never imagined this. R. Rias, he managed to mutter between breathes and s. The girl was far stronger than he expected. He saw for the first time that Rias' muscles were much more compact than his own, and despite their small size, they were able to exert quite a lot of power. Her slender and womanly figure was overpowering his manly stature. It was quite shocking for a healthy young man of six feet to be pressed down by a woman nearly half a head shorter. Rias sucked on his lower lip as she pulled away slightly, it is rude to nod back, you know? I'm s sorry, he instinctively replied, but I have no idea what I'm doing or what you're doing, he thought inwardly as the girl kept him on the ground. This is my first. Rias licked his lips and smiled at his jolt, this is my first as well. She ate him hard and strong before continuing, so you have no excuse. Her half-lidded eyes were enchanting Naruto, she looked so sexy that he felt weak. It isn't hard. I'll lead. She leaned in close and let their lips touch, just move your lips against mine, like this. The way she spoke against his lips made him moan and he found himself slowly moving against her lips, pressing into the, that's it. Rhea's tongue returned with a vengeance, she parted his lips and dove in, finding his tongue to be easy prey. Naruto moaned as Rhea's smooth and fleshy tongue brushed and slid against his own, exploring every part of his mouth. It was so, wet and warm. He tasted how sweet she was. For the first time in his life, his mind was shutting down and had become completely useless. He was completely at her whim responding onto to stimuli and her commands. You have no idea how long I've wanted to do this, Naruto. Rhea's face was flushed as she rubbed herself against Naruto, moaning as he groaned beneath her. I've dreamt of seeing you like this, moaning and groaning under me, drowning in pleasure and desire. Rhea's giggled as she licked his lips again, tasting him again and again. It makes me so, excited. The cute and innocent Rhea's in his mind was shattered, and replaced by the new seductive, wanton, sexy woman. He couldn't have imagined the girl he'd been friends with for the past year could become so passionate, so wild. Her voice was so melodic and full of emotion, it made his entire body shiver. I'm always watching you, Naruto. Rias admitted as she nibbled on his lips, wondering when you'd slip up. What do you mean, he managed to whisper back, his lips tingling. I have a keen eye, you know. Rias smirked as gave his lower lip a small tug, I see people and discover them. I see their wants, their desires, and the things they do to get those things. Everyone is imperfect, full of flaws. No matter how hard they try to deny it, or how many ways they try to hide it, I can always see. I see through everyone I meet, so matter who or what they are. Everyone, except for you. R. Rias, he tried to interrupt, but her lips quickly silenced him. Rias moaned into the, listen to me, my handsome Naruto. He instantaneously relented. I watched you for two years, and two years you were perfect. You don't cheat in school, you don't lie to anyone, you are kind and polite to everyone you know or meet. 
Even in the summer, you don't go on dates or fool around with any girls. You actually are a little like Robin Hood and you steal medicine for the poor and homeless. You're a hero to all of them. Rias shivered as she ran her hands under his shirt and felt his muscled chest, you're even handsome and sexy. I didn't understand how someone can be so perfect, and it was so annoying and frustrating. I'm not perfect. I know you're not, now. Rias ed him again and whispered haughtily against his lips, I finally found your flaw. She looked straight into his eyes and said, your have. You desire the warmth of a woman. You get aroused at the sight of them, the touch of them, or maybe even the scent of them, of me. Rias gently brought Naruto's hand to her, growing increasingly excited at his squirming body. I'm right, aren't I? You are ing after me. She pressed her harder into his hand. You love how I feel, how I taste, how I touch you. Rias brushed a finger along his towering arousal, tracing a trail along his shaft, his thin pants leaving little to imagination. W we can't, muttered Naruto with a steelier voice as he pulled his hand away from her and held her back by the shoulder. We have to stop this. We cannot do something like this here. He looked away from Rias and made sure to not make eye contact as he pushed her back. I have to go, he muttered. W we have a test today in class. Rias only smirked as she stood from the ground. You don't have to hold yourself back, Naruto kun. She stepped closer to him until she was pressed against him. I want you to lose control. I'll talk to you later. He stepped away. Sorry, but I'm almost late to school. Rias giggled. You shouldn't fight your desires. See you at school. Our Rias Chan. Naruto had never run faster in his life than at that moment. It was as if nothing had happened. How could she act so casually? For the first time in a long time, Naruto couldn't focus in class. The teacher had long since handed out the test, but all he could do was stare at the blank page. Whatever knowledge he had on advanced chemistry had all but vanished after such an exciting morning. He couldn't think straight. Whenever he tried to close his eyes to think and focus, all he could see was the image of Rias lying on top of him, ravaging his lips like a hungry beast. Naruto had experienced many things in his 17 years, but never had he ever felt so exhilarated. He had forged the idea of the local pharmacy, negotiated with thieves, burglars, drug addicts, pimps and convicts, and had saved the lives of many of them, but even then he wasn't as thrilled. His system was still flooded with adrenaline, so much so that his hands wouldn't stop shaking. All he could do was to remain silent in his desk, waiting for his nerves to calm. But for some reason, Rias was acting as if nothing had happened. As per usual, Rias Grammary sat very close to Naruto, right beside him today. Their desks were less than two feet apart. She was so close that he could smell her delightful vanilla perfume. Being in such close proximity to the most amazing woman he had ever met in his life did little to help Naruto calm down. But much to the wonderment of Naruto, Rias showed no sign of nervousness or excitement. Naruto had at least expected her to be angry at him. After all, he had wrestled his way out of her grip in the morning and nearly shoved her away. He was so nervous that he didn't even apologize before running as fast as he could to school. Everything had been a blur for him, and he could barely remember making his way into the classroom. He could see the hormones inside his body fluctuate, so he could explain his paranoia, but he could have sworn that people were staring at him all morning, and he couldn't figure out why. He took several deep breaths, but it did little to help, so he near jolted out of his desk when a small crumpled piece of paper landed on his desk. It was no mystery that he had come from Rias, but when he glanced at her, she remained silent. He bit his still tingling lip as he opened the note, you should wipe my lipstick off your lips. He blushed to the roots of his hair and immediately wiped his mouth of his sleeve, which was already very much out of character for such a meticulous person. But he couldn't help it. He finally figured out why people were staring at him all morning. As the top student in school, the teacher rarely concerned himself with Naruto cheating, so the blonde was safe to toss his own note to Rias. Why didn't you tell me? Rias nearly immediately tossed a note back, as if she already knew what he'd ask. I wanted to mark my territory. Naruto heart rate skyrocketed again as he stared down at his desk, trying to calm down. Rias' words from this morning was ringing in his ears. He could hear her voice whispering, you are mine, in his ears and it would grow louder and sultrier each time. He would try and fail to calm down for another hour and a half, until the bell finally rang, marking the end of the test and the beginning of lunch. He had wondered how he should go about it, but before he could decide, Rias stood from her desk and handed in her test, not once sparing Naruto a glance. He sat for a while longer, finally calming with Rias out of the room, but almost immediately felt the need to find her. He had truly intending to ask Rias out on a date in the morning, 
He really did have genuine feelings for the girl who had become a very close friend in the past year. She may have scared him a little in the morning, but if she really did accept his feelings, he'd jump at the chance to date her. So he quickly handed in his blank test, ignoring his teacher's surprised expression, and ran out of the classroom in search of Rias. Hey, Naruto-kun. He didn't have to look far, she was waiting for him right outside the classroom. Dear God, say something. Damn it, Naruto, say something. Now that he was so close to her, his heart rate started to rise again, and he was sure his face was red. Are you feeling alright? Your face is really red. Rias had a smile on her face the entire time, clearly teasing him. I need to speak with you, Rias chan Naruto finally managed to look her in the eyes, her enchanting and beautiful eyes. Rias stepped closer to him, making some passing students whisper and glance, Sure, what do you want to talk about? Naruto nearly shivered at her tickling breath on his lips, about this morning, that K. Oh, right, she whispered as her hands creeped up to his chest, fixing his blazer, our first. What is there to talk about? Naruto failed to say another word as she licked her lips, which made him weak in the knees. Do you want to have our second right now? And no, that's not what I'm asking. Suddenly, Rias stood on her tippy toes and planted her lips onto his. If Naruto wasn't so entranced by Rias, he would have heard many people gasp in shock all around them, but he didn't hear a thing. This was different than the one before. This one was sweet, tender and loving. It was just as warm, but nowhere near as sensual or wet, he loved it. A full minute passed before Rias pulled away, gently nibbling on his lower lip as she did. I know, but it's what I want. Naruto struggled to utter a sound, much less actually speak. I'm sorry, Naruto-kun, but I can't have lunch with you today. Akeno and I have our weekly meeting in the occult research club, so you'll have to eat without me today. She gently pecked him on the lips again before whispering, but I'll wait by the old schoolhouse after school today so you can pick me up for our date. Naruto remained motionless even after Rias walked away, leaving him and at least 20 other stunned students staring at him. It was until another few minutes passed before Rias' words registered in his mind. Wait, we're going on the date today? The afternoon was an utter hell for Naruto even after three bowls of ramen for lunch. He was supposed to have class with Rias, but she didn't show for the entire afternoon. He had thought that without the hot, sexy and affectionate lady in the room, he'd be able to calm down and focus on the task at hand, but he was wrong. Whenever the thought of going on his first date with Rias his hands would start to shake and his hands would go numb, and it went on for the entire afternoon. Finally, and inevitably, the time had come. Naruto, after fixing any crumples in his uniform, stood outside of the old schoolhouse, waiting for his beautiful lady to be ready. Okay, Naruto, relax. Breathe in, and breathe out. This is going to be fine. You've been planning this date for an entire week already, so relax. She's going to love it, and she's going to love you. Then she's going to you, just like she did in the morning. Oh dear God, I'm nervous. Oh heyo, Naruto-san. Naruto was surprised to find someone speaking to him from the second floor window. He looked up and saw Himejima Akeno, one of Rias' closest friends and vice president of the occult research club. Sorry to have you wait. Bucko is ready and is coming down now. Naruto felt his heart quicken again, okay, thank you, Akeno-san. Akeno giggled, you're welcome. He breathed out and stretched his shoulders, waiting for the door to open, and he didn't have to wait long. But all his memorized lines and practiced smiles evaporated from his mind the moment he laid eyes of Rias. Gone were her school clothes, they were replaced by a stunning red dress that stopped just at the knee, and the soft fabric hugged her curvaceous body like a second skin. Her long red hair was tied into a side ponytail, letting the waterfall of red flow down her right shoulder. Sorry, she whispered softly as she made her way to him, did I make you wait long? He shook his head, still entranced, you look beautiful, even more than usual. Thank you, Naruto-kun. She leaned up and planned a small on his lips, you're so sweet. Naruto blushed, but continued. Shall we go? Rias immediately linked their arms together, yes, we shall. Kuo town was beautiful in the spring. The Sakura trees paved the streets and was in full bloom, turning the roads into a pink paradise. They walked under the canopy, letting a pink glow fall onto them. Still arm in arm, Naruto led his date to one of his favorite restaurants. Everything was going well and was seemingly perfect, but Naruto couldn't calm his nerves. Rias was hold his arm rather close, so it was pressed up against the side of her large, occasionally making a jiggle and bounce. Naruto was certain that Rias was doing it on purpose, but when he glanced over at her, 
she pretend that nothing was happening. Though through his eyes, Naruto could see that Rias was excited. Her hormones weren't as erratic as his was, but it was spiking at random times. Her adrenaline was also higher than normal, and would fluctuate every time his arm pressed against her. You know, I don't think I've ever asked you this, Rias suddenly said, breaking Naruto from his analysis. What do you plan to do after high school? Naruto was a little surprised at the normal question, university is the next step. I've already planned my current courses to be more science focused. I plan to applying for medical school. Rias smiled, of course. It has always been a dream of mine to be a doctor. Naruto felt a tad more relaxed at talking about something usual and casual, it's something that I think I'm born to do. There was a glint in Rias' eyes, so you plan on working in a hospital? Maybe for the first few years, but what I really want is to join Medicine Sans Frontiers. Doctors without borders? Naruto nodded with a smile, yeah. Japan is rich and advanced, and our people here have common access to medicine and doctors, so we're commonly fine. We do have the poor and homeless, but it is small compared to other countries. What I really want to do is to help people in need in places where they can't find any help. They are the people we need to help the most. Rias hugged his arm closer, but noticed that he was no longer flinching, are you sure? Those places can be really dangerous, and volunteers can be targets of attacks. Yes, I know, Naruto shrugged, but those are risks I am willing to take. Rias wasn't too surprised. After learning about Naruto for the past few years, she noticed that he was annoyingly selfless in many ways. He'd go out of his way to help people, even if it would be a detriment to his own life. More than once, Rias had thought she'd have to jump in and save him from some thief or Yakuza after he forced his own diagnosis on them. But as usual, somehow in some way, Naruto would always manage to talk his way through everything and end up becoming quite good friends with everyone, no matter who there were. For such a morally strong and honest person, he sure had many shady friends in odd places. Well, I guess being a doctor is something I could do as well. Naruto looked over at her, really? You want to as well? Rias raised a brow at him, don't you remember what I said this morning? She halted their steps and pulled him down to her height, staring straight into his eyes. I'm going to make you mine, Naruto-kun. So you better get used to being around me, even if it means going to other countries. Naruto couldn't help but feel a little happy, besides, you'll need someone beside regular security to protect you. You're far too reckless when it comes to helping people. You'll die if you go on these trips alone. He chuckled and actually leaned down to Rias on the forehead. Thank you, Rias Chan. Rias' breath shivered as she grew flushed, and Naruto could see her estrogen levels skyrocket and her adrenaline steadily increase. You're welcome, she whispered huskily. Now let's continue on our date. She pulled Naruto by the hand and steadily sped up, almost running. Naruto was surprised when Rias took a sudden turn. Wait, the restaurant is the other way. We're not going to dinner now. What? But I made a reservation. Rias turned back and winked at him, you're going to break the rules this time. Naruto had no idea Rias could run so fast, and he was having trouble keeping up. He was already out of breath, but could see that Rias was still perfectly fine. Everything was almost like a blur as she pulled him by the hand, zipping through other people and cutting through alleyways. He was familiar with the layout of their town, but after so many turns and so little oxygen and water, he had no idea where he was. He just assumed that Rias was bringing him to her desired restaurant, and breathed a sigh of relief in his quick and rapid breaths when they finally entered a building. Welcome. How can I help you today? Asked a cheerful hostess, Naruto assumed. Rias quickly responded, we'd like one room, please. Wait, what? Before Naruto could even utter a sound, Rias paid the clerk for the entire night and dragged Naruto up the room. It was like they left modern Japan and went back in time. As soon as Rias opened the door to their room, Naruto was shocked. The room was built like a traditional Japanese house in the Edo era. The glass windows were replaced by bamboo and paper, the marble flooring turned into tatami tiles, and there was even a small koi pond in the middle of the room. And in the middle of the room was the largest futon Naruto had ever seen. Today is a busy Friday, so this is the only room they have open. Rias whispered as she leaned in close to him, brushing her lips against his. But I think this room is wonderful. Rias, please think about this. Naruto forced out a strong and clear voice, but his hands were shaking. This is going way too fast. I know, she moaned, but I can't help it. Naruto moaned as Rias attacked his jawline and neck with S, R Rias. Everything about you drives me crazy. Just from you ing me on the forehead makes me want to have you, right here, right now. 
Ryu's eyes turned red for an instant, surprising Naruto, you're so, good. It's like you're an angel. And I want to see you, she sucked on his tender skin and left a hickey on his neck, moaning, screaming, drowning in pleasure. I want to see you writhing beneath me, calling out my name. Naruto blushed to the roots of his hair, how can you even talk like that? I'm not the kind of girl who jumps into bed with someone like this, Rias whispered in his ear as she sucked on his earlobe, there is just something about you, and only you, Naruto that makes me so, aroused. Naruto felt his own arousal strain against his pants as Rias threw off her vest and tore open her shirt, leaving her in a very sexy, semi-see-through bra. I've wanted to lose my virginity for a while already, my parents want me to save it for this potential marriage, but to hell with them. You're the one I'm meant to lose it with. Rias moaned as she ripped off her skirt, I hate how controlling my parents are and I hate the man and family they're trying to marry me into. And I love how good this feels right now and I am absolutely crazy about you, Naruto. So two birds with one stone, I guess. Naruto could feel his control slipping, s stop this. Rias watched as Naruto's pupil dilate as she removed her bra and freed her bouncing s for his eyes to see, do you not want me? Oh dear god, he muttered as his knees grew weak. God can't help you here, my love. Rias pushed Naruto hard and made him fall onto the futon. You're all mine now, and only mine. Rias felt herself flood against her see through panties as she watched Naruto's arousal strain against his pants, pushing the fabric into a tall tent. Just give in to your, to your desire. I promise that from this day on, you'll be writhing in pleasure every single night. Naruto was struggling to keep his mind sane, but the moment Rias pulled down her panties and revealed to him her most sacred and private part, dripping and flooded, all the blood left his brain and went straight to his second head. He was pushed beyond the point of reason. Rias straddled Naruto and moaned when her soaking womanhood brushed against his leg, let's get you out of these clothes. With a deft motion, Rias tore Naruto's shirt away from his body and ripped open his pants, leaving him in only his boxers, his extremely strained boxers. Naruto was breathing heavily and rapidly, and Rias was nearly shaking in anticipation. With another swipe, Rias ripped his boxers away and nearly climaxed at the sight of her, rock hard, tall, pulsating and throbbing prize. Naruto's hips buckled as Rias spread herself on top of him, oh, my god. From this moment on, Naruto, Rias bit her lips and lowered herself down, completely tearing through her hymen and swallowing Naruto's throbbing manhood whole with one fell motion, you're mine. Neither Naruto nor Rias had any idea how many hours have passed, but the sun had long since set. The only source of light came from the candles that lit every wall of the room, and the artificial light behind the bamboo windows. Pillows and blankets were thrown all over the room, and the futon was a dissembled mess. Parts of the walls were charred and destroyed, and candle chandelier on the ceiling was hanging to the side. Paintings on the walls were ripped and even some of the tatami tiles were cracked and split open. Lying the in the far end in the room was the new couple, covered in sweat, a little blood, and a variety of other bodily fluids. Their bodies were tangled together, obviously still joined by their most sacred parts. By now, Naruto was on top, and was grinding his hips against Rias, shaking as he released another spurt of pleasure into her body. By now, all he could hear was Rias' moans and could only feel her incredible warmth and tightness. It had perhaps been a few hours since their lips had been apart. But finally, Naruto fell onto his back and Rias onto his chest, both exhausted and sore. Naruto stared up at the ceiling his arms wrapped tightly around Rias. How in the world did we break the chandelier? Rias couldn't help but laugh as she snuggled deeper into his chest, I think I accidentally kicked my shoe up there. He laughed along, no longer feeling nervous, but still extremely adrenaline filled. Dear God, I'm so sore. You? I'm the one who is sore? Rias giggled and at his neck, which now was littered with at least a dozen hickeys, which was nearly as much as she had on her neck. I started this, but you definitely finished it. They remained wrapped in each other's arms under a comfortable silence, letting the calming tone of each other's breathing lull them into a peaceful rest. They were a little cold, but the blankets were thrown all the way to the other side of the room, so they only snuggled closer together to keep warm. They had no idea what time it was either, their phones were somewhere hidden in the room, under ripped shirts and scattered pants. How are we going to leave? wondered Naruto, breaking the silence, our clothes are all ripped and destroyed. Naruto was a little surprised to see Rias not responding. Hey, is something wrong? Rias wrapped her legs around his waist, nothing, really. It's just that, now that my mind is a bit clear, I'm a little embarrassed about how I acted. 
Naruto blinked and focused his eyes, and saw that Ria's hormonal levels were back to normal, the lowest they've been for the past day. I kind of went crazy and forced myself onto you, Naruto-kun. She blushed hard, I'm sorry. It was so hot, I love seeing him being so sexy and naughty. Inwardly, Rias was on cloud 9 knowing that she'd finally corrupted Naruto. Naruto rolled the both of them over until he was on top of her, and ate her tenderly on the lips. Never apologize for giving me the most amazing, incredible and unforgettable night of my entire life. Rias gave him a small smile, you might have been a bit into it at first, but I was no less enthusiastic once we've gotten into it. I honestly think that I might have hurt you at one point. Rias ran her fingers through his hair and shook her head, you will never hurt me. He ed her again, never on purpose, but I am sorry, she wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him close, you're always so perfect and morally strong. I know you didn't want you first time to be in a love hotel, or maybe even out of wedlock. But seeing how good and righteous you were just made me want to have you more. Rias lightly ed him, I'm a bad woman, Naruto. Sorry for making this so sinful. Ah, oh, sinful. Just thinking about Naruto acting sinful makes me excited. I don't think it's sinful at all. Naruto chuckled and ed her nose. It's not sinful for a man or woman to make love to someone they care about or have genuine feelings for. Rias looked surprised. No, I think this was a beautiful thing. I'm absolutely crazy about you, Rias. I've had feelings for you for a long time already, and to be able to share this night with you was just perfect. Huh? Rias was starting to feel a little confused. What do you mean it's not sinful? She screamed inwardly. You were also a little wrong when you said that I'm only ing after you. I don't think it's or can be called when I have genuine feelings for you. Not, huh, nope, not at all. This isn't sinful. I think this is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Rias moaned. What do you mean it's not sinful? Naruto was surprised at her reaction. What? Damn it, Naruto. You are still so perfect and good. What the hell do you mean it's not sinful? Rias was getting annoyed and frustrated again. We just had steamy, hot sex. We were like animals. I attacked you and you gave me over a dozen hickeys on my neck and more on my ass. It was sinful, very sinful. Naruto chuckled. You're really cute, you know? No, not cute. I'm sexy, and you are, too. Rias rolled Naruto over on his back and straddled him again. I'll show you not sinful. Do you want this to be sinful? Yes, Rias lowered herself onto her lover. I'll corrupt you yet. Uzumaki Naruto. Damn it, I'm seriously falling for this perfect idiot. It was a cold morning and frost covered the town. The chill seeped through the open window and the winds caught onto the curtains, making Naruto smile in his bed. He had always enjoyed cold mornings, and would leave his windows open to draw in the cold winds during the night. To the young man, there was nothing cozier than being wrapped in a warm and comfy blanket inside a cold and windy room. Hearing the howling winds and soft patter of rain right outside his window was peaceful and relaxing, and made him want to sleep in and enjoy the warmth. It's cold, whispered a soft voice. Naruto smiled again and turned to his side, it's great, isn't it? He opened his arms and welcomed the slightly shivering Rias against his chest, her body snuggly pressed up against his. It makes you appreciate the warmth you have. Rias pinched Naruto's butt, shut up, Mr. Perfect. It's way too early for your speeches. Naruto smiled as he combed his fingers through Rias' beautiful hair, ing the top of her head as she drifted back to sleep. Go back to sleep. We still have time before we have to leave. I'm awake already. I'll go make us some breakfast. Rias moaned and hugged him tighter. No, you're warm. Stay in bed. Naruto couldn't help but return a tight hug with a soft chuckle. Sure, whatever you want. The young man had gotten used to his girlfriend staying over at his place, a benefit that came with living alone in the city. It was a little awkward at first, but even if they'd part ways after school, Rias would somehow sneak into his house without him knowing and cuddle with him in bed. Not to mention that their carnal activities were becoming increasingly frequent and lasting, so sleeping together for the night just made good sense. It was true that their physical relationship had brought them closer than ever. Even without talking, Naruto learned a lot more about Rias in two weeks than the full two years they had known each other. He learned that she was a great cook, much better than him. Her full western breakfasts and incredible miso paste destroyed his toast and cup ramen. He found out that she took many showers throughout the day because she loved the feeling of hot water running down her body, and Naruto had found himself joining her for many of those. Most enjoyably, Naruto learned that Rias loved to cuddle in bed, and he was more than happy to indulge in. If anything, Naruto was falling deeper and harder for Rias with each passing day. Ugh, 
Now I'm awake, whined Rias as she rubbed her cheek against Naruto's chest. Naruto chuckled and gently tilted her head by the chin, good morning, Rias. He leaned down and ate her tenderly on the lips, enjoying the jolt of excitement that would rush down his spine every time their lips met. Rias smiled into the unlightly bit onto his lower lip, sucking on it as she pulled away. Good morning to you, too. She pushed him flat on his back and climbed on top of him, rubbing her bits and pieces all against his. Her long red hair fell around them like a veil of red silk, covering them as their lips met again and again, warm in the middle of a cold and frosty morning. She felt his gentle and warm hands slide from her thighs to her waist, caressing her soft and smooth skin as she penetrated his lips with her roaming tongue. He was so gentle and loving that Rias felt as if she was melting in his arms and nearly fell asleep under his warmth. But before Rias could say what she wanted, Naruto stole her words from out of her mouth. You drive me crazy, Rias. Rias barely managed a smirk before Naruto flipped their positions and pinned her on the bed, holding her arms above her head. I have no control when I'm with you. Rias felt Naruto's burning manhood probe her inner thighs and sent him a full stare. I want you, now. Your wish is my command. For the third time in one week, Naruto and Rias were late to school. Men, whether they be humans or otherwise had never been much of a mystery to Rias. Growing up as a princess of the underworld, sister of Lucifer, daughter and heiress to the Gremory family, she had suitors coming from all corners of the underworld. One after the other, ever since she was a child, parents and children of other great houses would come to their home and present her with gifts and favor, and to Rias, everyone looked the same. It was always the same courteous smile and polite bows and curtsies. Everything was pretentious and everyone had ulterior motives. There was nothing genuine with the rich and powerful, with some rare exceptions. Beside her father and brother, and the rest of her family, Rias never imagined that another good and genuine man would be good and genuine to her. That was until she met and fell for the most lovable idiot known to man, Uzumaki Naruto. Rias sat in her desk in the old schoolhouse and threw her head back against her chair, since when do I fall for someone so easily and quickly? Damn it, I already miss him. Bucko, Bucko, did you hear me? Rias focused when she heard her newest pawn speak to her, what is it, Issei? Um, I'm finished with delivering the flyers, muttered the man with a lecherous grin, obviously ogling her s. Rias had nearly forgotten about Issei recently. She had noticed the young man ever since she noticed some unwanted guests in their town giving him some unusual attention. She had ordered her rook and queen to keep their eyes on him, and she was indeed correct with her assumptions. There were several fallen angels in town and they were obviously up to no good but ever since Naruto made her into such a lovesick girl, she had no time to think about such annoying matters. Rias even gave Akino, her queen all her pawn pieces so she could implant them into Issei, the very same night she made love to Naruto for the first time. Since when do I call it, making love? Rias nearly slammed her head onto the table, but she was once again interrupted. Are you all right, Bucho? You are kind of spacing out again. She managed a small smile, it's fine, Issei. You're done for the night. Go home and get some rest. The boy nodded dumbly, okay. Rias didn't even notice Issei leave the room, or that most of her peerage had gone already. She was once again deep in thought and wonder, thinking and wondering when or where she made a mistake. So far, nothing was turning out the way she thought it would. It wasn't the worst part, though, the worst part was that she was perfectly happy with everything, beyond happy. She would be smiling day and night and everywhere in between in classrooms, during lunch, after school, on the streets and even at home. She'd never been so happy in her entire life, and she had no idea how it happened. She was even smiling now. She was in her own world until someone sat down on her desk and lightly flicked her head, are you going to start talking now? Rias looked up to see her best friend and queen. What? You've been out of it for the entire day, Rias. Akino turned Rias' chair so they were face to face and gave her a stern stare, so you better tell me everything. I need details. You already know everything, Akino. No, I don't. Akino giggled and pulled Rias onto her feet, leading her over to the couch. All I know is that you two slept together. Akino pulled Rias close by the arm, come on, I want to know. You never keep any secrets from me. It's no secret, Rias muttered with a small frown, I'm just a little confused. About what? This wasn't supposed to happen. I was just annoyed and frustrated at Naruto for being so good and perfect, and I wanted to prove that he's not. Everyone has flaws, so I wanted to force his out. It was a simple plan. 
I draw out his and prove that I am right, that no one is perfect. Rias was almost pouting. It kind of worked and he was extremely attracted to me. What I didn't expect was for me to be extremely attracted to him. Akino giggled and bounced closer to Rias, really. There was something wrong with me, but when I saw how erotic and wrong I was making Naruto behave, it turned me on like nothing before. I mean, I pushed him down and ed him right in the middle of the street. Rias blushed as her best friend left, it was okay at the time, I was still right. I was being full, but so was he. But I couldn't stop there, I wanted to keep going and couldn't stop myself. I could have just left it there and walked away, but I didn't want it to end. I'll say, added Akino as she held Rias' arm, you were so excited and made me skip class with you to prepare for that date. Rias smiled, he really did put a lot of thought into our date. He planned out the various ways to get to the restaurant, he made a reservation ahead of time, he was dressed nicely and smelled good. I was enjoying myself and planned to go through with the whole thing, but then he decided to me on the forehead. Akino raised an eyebrow at her, making Rias blush. I know it doesn't sound so exciting, but it was. After that, I lost control and basically dragged him to a love hotel. You are so bold. Akino laughed as Rias glared at her with a blush. Don't stop now. What happened after? Rias' blush grew redder. It was almost morning by the time we were finished, and, and I was happy just cuddling with him. She closed her eyes to not see Akino's teasing smile. I thought I had won, you know. We were like animals and we nearly destroyed the room. We had a sinful and why night of passion. It sure sounds like it. Rias ignored her best friend and continued, but he went on to say how beautiful and perfect our first night was. I said it was sinful and why, but no. He kept babbling about how it is not sinful or even why if we have genuine feelings for each other. We made love. Akino laughed again. Oh, that must have annoyed you. Then what did you do? I straddled him again and we made love until the afternoon. Oh, my Satan. He's good. I'm confused, Akino. Stop laughing and help me. Akino tried to stop and managed to mutter, what are you confused about? What do you think? I was just trying to corrupt him. I didn't expect it to be real. But when he said that we had genuine feelings for each other, I couldn't refute. I do have real feelings for him. I don't know when or how it happened, but it did. Akino finally stopped laughing and listened. After that night, he asked if I am his girlfriend, and I was excited to say yes. He held my hand when we walked to school and I was extremely happy. Then I thought if we spend some time apart, I would return to normal, but I didn't. I couldn't even make myself stay away from him for a single day. I teleported into his home the very next night and we slept together again. Rias rubbed her temples, for the entire week, this went on. Wow, it sounds like you're actually a couple now. I know, I have no idea how or when it happened, but somehow, we're in a real relationship now. It's not a full one-night stand or a sinful friends with benefits deal. We're boyfriend and girlfriend, we're lovers. Rias sighed, but the scary part is that I'm perfectly fine with this, more than perfectly fine. I'm happy, really happy. I woke up this morning and thought how great it would be if I get to wake up in Naruto's arms every morning from now on. She blushed again, I I'm falling in love with him. Huh, managed Akino, still a little shocked. Are you sure? Rias nodded, now calming down, feeling elated after telling her best friend. I've never been in love before, but it's hard to imagine this to be anything else. So, in the end, you didn't corrupt him at all, but he managed to get you to fall in love with him. Rias sighed dejectedly, yes. Amazing, whispered Akino. He is just that perfect and good. Really? Asked Akino, I don't think so. What do you mean? The queen held her chin in thought, I think you are giving up rather hastily. I agree with you that no one is perfect, and so far, Naruto sounds far too perfect to be real. I refuse to believe that he has no at all, that he only slept with you because he has real feelings for you. Rias gave a small groan and rubbed her temples, if what he says in true, then it means that if he meets another woman who is just as beautiful and attractive as you, he won't sleep with her even if she offered herself to him all because he has no feelings for her. Rias nodded, yes, he really is that frustratingly annoying. You can't really believe that, Rias. Akino crossed her arms, no man or woman is free of, even angels have, that is why some of them fall. I'm willing to bet that if someone beautiful offers herself to Naruto, he will say the exact same things he said to you. Much to Rias' horror, she was horrified that Naruto might be unfaithful to her. 
D do you think that's true? Akino grinned. There really is only one way to find out. The small clinic operated by Naruto had since grown from the tiny storage unit a year ago. Many of the aspiring doctor's patients and friends had decided to help him in his endeavor, and saw to it that he received enough funding for his materials. Naruto never did ask where or how the money was made or come from. It was no mystery coming from convicts and criminals. He only rejoiced in the fact that the money will be used to for good and lasting cause and will save lives. So in the middle of a desolate and crime-fester district was a series of stretching storage units, all connected to each other. It was powered by several generators behind the thick forest tree line, and had enough water supply to last a full year in isolation. Most of them were cooled in order to store medication and various specimens, and the rest were sanitized and filtered clean rooms that will be used for surgery. At the age of 17, Naruto was gaining more experience than any medical school student. But today was a peaceful and quiet day, so Naruto was relaxed. Hold on to your mother's hands, okay. He spoke in the gentlest voice he could muster, and the small boy listened and turned away, holding tightly onto his mother's hands. This won't hurt a bit. His eyes clear revealed to him the veins in the child's arm, and he skillfully injected the syringe. It's okay, whispered the concerned mother. Dr. Uzumaki is here to help us. Naruto smiled. There, all done. After quite a few months of trying, Naruto finally managed to procure a large amount of vaccination for his patients. There were quite a few children who needed to take the shots, and the shipment came just before high season. It took nearly two weeks, but the parents all managed to gather their children discreetly and had them vaccinated. Did it hurt? He asked. The boy gave him a toothless grin. No, it didn't. Good job, buddy. Naruto handed the boy a lollipop. Now you won't get sick so easily. The boy's mother bowed to Naruto. Thank you so much, doctor. Are you sure we can't give you anything? We do have some possessions. Please, ma'am, nothing at all. Naruto smiled and ruffled the boy's hair. All I need to know is that the children are properly vaccinated. The tears spilled from the woman's eyes. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, doctor. Just Naruto is okay, ma'am. The sun was setting after a long day, and Naruto stood from his desk and stretched his back. He was still a little sore from the morning, and the night before, and the few days before. His abdomen and back muscles were the most strained, but his arms and legs were also sore. His neck and chest were covered in love bites, and he was sure that Rias had marked his back with her nails this morning. But regardless, he couldn't complain and couldn't wipe the smile from his face. As Rias Nichan not here today? Naruto smiled at the small boy. No, she isn't. She has some club activities and couldn't come today. But I'll tell her that you miss her, okay? The poor boy blushed. Okay. Thank you again for everything, doctor. The woman bowed again, this time lower. God bless you for everything you've done. Please, feel free to come back for anything you need. The mother and son left and the clinic was empty, at long last. The lines of people were overwhelming to look at a few hours ago, and Naruto was still in his school uniform when he started working. Thankfully everyone was organized and tame. There were no pushing or shoving and everyone peacefully waited for their turn. But it was clear that the amount of people coming were increasing. It would seem that nearly all the homeless people in the city were coming to see him. Soon Naruto would have to increase his inventory. Suddenly, his phone vibrated in his pocket. Hello. Hey, Naru-chan. A smile instantly came onto Naruto's face after he immediately recognized that voice. Hey, Gabriel Nichan. Naruto had always been grateful to his foster parents. They were like his true parents, and certainly treated him like their own flesh and blood. Even as an orphan, he grew up with a caring father, a loving mother, and a wonderful and fun older sister. Contrary to what some of his schoolmates believe, Naruto's family loved him and cared for him beyond measure, especially his sister. Gabriel had been Naruto's role model ever since he was a child. She taught him how to be a good person, how to care for others, how to help people, and above all, she was who taught him how to use his eyes, how to see. How've you been? Why haven't you called? You can't be too busy for family you know. You told me you'd call me every night if you move out. Don't you always keep your promises? Naruto bit his lip. Nay Chan, I called you just a few days ago. Why didn't you call yesterday, or the day before, or the day before that? Well, he muttered with a soft chuckle, I I met a girl. A girl, you said you're moving away to study and to become independent. You're not supposed to go gallivanting with girls. Nay Chan. 
cried Naruto, hoping to stop his sister. I'm not playing around or anything. I really like this girl. This is special. He couldn't help but smile at the thought of Rias, leaning against the wall. She's really great. He could practically see Gabriel's pout. I'll introduce her to you the next time you're in town. You better. I have to approve of her. Not everyone is good enough for my baby brother. Nay Chan, I'm the one who doesn't deserve someone like her. Naruto chuckled. Either way, I'm sure you'll love each other. Wait a minute. Naruto had a terrible feeling as his sister trailed off. You couldn't call me at night. What in the world were you doing with that girl so late at night? He tried to answer. He really did, but no matter how hard he tried to think, his mind was blank. Dear Lord, please don't tell me that you sinned. D don't call it that, Nay Chan. How could you? Gabriel was practically deafening Naruto's ear, what have I taught you? The union between a man and a woman is sacred, and should never be done out of wedlock. Especially you, Naruto. He knew it was bad when his sister didn't use her affectionate nickname for him. No, there is no way this can continue. This girl is bad for you. I am forbidding you from seeing her. Nay Chan, we didn't sin. Naruto rubbed his neck and tried to dry his sweating, it is not a sin to make love to a woman I have genuine feelings for. We might have rushed into the whole thing, but I really like her and I think this is something serious. I haven't lived with you for three years and you turned into a delinquent. Naruto sighed, Nay Chan, can you just be happy for me? I'm in love and I'm happy. No, this is wrong. Not to mention that you're too young to be doing something like this. If you don't stop this, I'll come over there myself and drag you back home. Naruto was actually worried. Do you want that to happen? Before Naruto could respond, the doorbell rang. And he thanked God above, he needed an excuse to escape. Nay Chan, I'll call you back. There's someone at the door. Hey, don't you hang up on me. I I'm not hanging up on you, Nay Chan. I'll call you right back. Naruto loved his sister more than life but she would dote on him like he was five years old. I love you, Nay chan Sorry, I'll call you right back. Naruto ended the call and sighed against the wall, until the doorbell rang again. Coming. Naruto had expected one of his usual patients, so either another addict or one of the known thieves in the area, but he was surprised to see his girlfriend's best friend, a famous lady his school, Akino Himahima. Um, hi, Akino-san. I'm surprised to see you here. Akino was still dressed in her school uniform, her tall and long ponytail falling from her back and nearly to the ground. Her face was flushed and was breathing rapidly, she was rested against the wall on her side, looking almost intoxicated. I need your help, Naruto-san. Naruto's eyes widened when Akino tripped on her way in and fell into his arms. Are you all right, Akino-san? The girl held onto his shirt collar and pulled him close. I'm sorry to bother you so late but Rias told me that you run a clinic here and I need your help. Naruto gently brought Akino to the examination table and sat her down, mindful of her body. I don't feel comfortable going to other doctors, they're all strangers. At least I know you and consider you a friend. Naruto smiled, I'm glad to hear that, Akino-san. How can I help you? I don't feel well, she whispered, glancing up at him, her pink lips swollen. I I'm a little shameful to say. He smiled again as kind and caring as ever. I may not be a doctor yet, but I do respect doctor-patient confidentiality. Whatever you tell me here and now will forever be a secret between us. I will never tell another soul, that I swear. Akino gently reached for Naruto's hand, I I have some pain. He relaxed his eyes and got ready to check, where? Here. Whatever thought or predictions Naruto had in his mind was obliterated when Akino placed his unsuspecting hand onto her pushing it deep into her soft and warm flesh. They've always been big and I've developed early, but they've never hurt like this. Naruto's face was a deep red and he struggled to utter a sound, especially since Akino was moving his hand up and down, bouncing her large in his hand. You can understand why I can't just go to a stranger for something like this. I I don't and need to touch to check, he managed to force out. I know, but I'm just trying to show you where it hurts. Naruto watched in horror as Akino started to unbutton her blouse, leaving her large and swaying s covered only by a small and semi-transparent bra. It hurts the most, she guided his fingers right under her left and made him bounce her up and down, right here. Naruto cleared his throat and pulled his hand away, t there can be several reasons. He tried to be as professional as he could and maintain eye contact with her. 
You could have bruised a part on your chest, maybe during fizz. Ed or sometime during the day. The actual bruising can remain invisible for a few hours. Really? Can you check if I'm bruised? Naruto nearly jolted from his seat when Akino suddenly took off her bra, leaving her bare s bouncing hypnotically in front of him, her pink s dancing in his eyes. D do you want some privacy? Akino just stared at Naruto. No, I want you to check them for me. She started to rub her own s, making them sway and bounce, really showing Naruto just how soft they were. I feel fine here, she said while rub the top of s, but it is a little tender here. Akino lifted her right s, her heavy flesh sinking into her hand, and rubbed the underside of her. Is there a bruise I can't see there? Naruto was adverting his eyes, but finally decided to give her a professional checkup. Let's see. He did his best to not stare and close examined her chest, skin and deeper inside, and found nothing wrong. I don't see anything wrong. You don't seem to have any sort of external marking that would indicate a bruising. I won't have any lumps, right? Akino looked scared. I heard that some women have lumps in their s and it's really bad. Naruto scanned her with his eyes and found nothing, I wouldn't worry, Akino san I can't see anything. How can you be sure with just looking? She grabbed his hand and shoved it against her s, meshing it in between. Feel them and tell me. She reached for his other hand and forced it onto her other. Now he had a hand on each of her s and she was making him fondle her. He was struggling to remain calm, there really isn't anything. Really. Are you sure? Why yes. Really sure. I'd have peace of mind if you feel me more. Naruto felt Akino's s harden against his palm and her face grow increasingly flushed, not to mention the rise of estrogen in her body. Yes, you're really f fine. Akino smiled and finally released his hands. Oh, that's good news. I if you would please dress, I will write you a prescription for some painkillers. But before Naruto could leave the room, Akino grabbed hold of his wrist, wait, you still haven't explained why I'm hurting. He knew his face was red, but he was struggling to find a reason for her pain. You know I've heard that some women going through puberty will experience pain in their growing areas because of their changing hormonal levels. Maybe I have too much of something in my system. And no, I don't think that's it. Naruto tried and failed to pull away, some painkillers should be good for now. No, I really think that I have hormonal imbalance. Akino was much stronger than Naruto had expected and pulled him down, nearly making fall onto her. He stopped himself, but his face was dangerously close to her s. I know that reaching orgasm can help release some hormones and stress. Can you please help me with that? Naruto was shocked, what are you saying? Don't act naive. Rias and I are best friends and she tells me everything. Akino hugged Naruto's head against her s, nearly pushing a into his mouth. I know you two have done it so you have experience. I I have no experience with men and have no boyfriend, so I need your help with this. The young man tried to escape, but wasn't physically capable. No, this is crazy, Akino san. Ah, she moaned, it feels good when you talk against my s. Let me go, shouted Naruto, trying to not accidentally take Akino's in his mouth as he did. This is highly inappropriate and is making me uncomfortable. I'll never tell Rias, Akino whispered. She'll never know. Aren't you excited? Your girlfriend's best friend is smothering your face in her s. She moaned again, rubbed her s onto his face. I think this is exciting. I've always wanted to have an affair with someone. Keep a dirty and forbidden secret between only us. Come on. Rias said you are amazing in bed and I want to try it out myself. Naruto actually managed to push Akino away enough to not be smothered. There is no way we can do this, Akino-san. Why not? She'll never know. That doesn't matter. Naruto pushed away more. I'm flattered that you want me for your partner, but I cannot accept. Rias is my girlfriend and your best friend. What you are suggesting is probably one of the worst things I can ever do to Rias, and I will never do anything to hurt her. Akino sighed. What she doesn't know won't hurt her. I will never betray her trust for me. You are too selfless. You know that. The black-haired girl let go of Naruto, making him recoil back into a wall but before he could even think of freedom, she pinned him against the wall. You shouldn't think of other people's feelings before your own. What man doesn't want to be with a beautiful woman? Don't you find me attractive? I don't think I'll lose to Rias. Naruto groaned in exasperation, you are very beautiful and attractive, Akino-san, and any man will be lucky to have you. But that man will not be me. 
I haven't been with Rias for a long time and I know we are still discovering our feelings for each other, but I am absolutely crazy about her. I seriously think that I am falling in love with her. So I can tell you very clearly and surely that nothing will happen between you and me. He backed away as far as possible, leaving his back pressed straight against the wall. Please let me go and we can just let this pass. Akino stared at Naruto silently, not talking or moving, just looking. Gone were her sultriness and they were replaced by surprise and wonder. I can't believe it, she finally muttered as she broke the silence. You really are perfect, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Just let me go. Much to Naruto's horror, Akino's and sultriness returned with a vengeance. She leaned closer to him and ran her leg up his thigh, her knee dangerously close to his manhood. I can see why Rias is so enamored with you. You're too good and righteous. Girls like us just want to see you break to corrupt you, to see you moan and writhe in pleasure. Akino gave a low giggle as she licked her lips, it makes me want to, punish you. Naruto had no idea why Rias and Akino were so strong and couldn't break free, what are you doing? Akino chuckled as she leaned further in, her lips dancing just above his. I'd like a piece of you, too. That's enough, A-K-E-N-O. A blur of red came from out of nowhere and pushed Akino away, knocking her to the other side of the room. It was a few seconds later that Naruto noticed that Rias was in the room. He instinctively shivered and quickly stood tall and tried to fix his clothes. Rias, this is not what it looks like. He desperately tried to explain, I I told Akino-san that I am with you and that nothing will ever happen between her and I. I tried to push away, but shish. Naruto was swiftly cut off when Rias pulled him by the arm and slammed her lips onto his. He was too shocked to respond to the and could only fall back against the wall as his girlfriend ravished his mouth and subjugated his tongue. But suddenly, the ended as abruptly as it started. Rias held Naruto against the wall as her eyes turned red, from now on, you are mine and mine alone. I will be the only woman you will ever. She brought his hand up to her s and made him grab on, these will be the only s you will touch. She cupped his crotch and felt his hard shaft, and this belongs to me. It will only ever enter my body. Your lips, arms, legs, hands, chest, all of you belongs to me. Naruto could only silently nod. Akino licked her lips with a giggle, Bucho is such a selfish girl. Rias hugged Naruto around his waist as she turned to glare at Akino, he's mine. Naruto saw the changes in himself. His heart rate was increasing, his arterial tension was high, his production of testosterone was skyrocketing, and his cortisol level was dropping fast. The entire left hemisphere of his brain was active and shining. It was irrefutable proof to himself that he was angry, very angry. It had been quite a long time since such intense negative emotions was felt by the young man. Normally he'd have the sense to reason past his anger, but the very sight in front of him was infuriating. His right hand was held into a tight fist under the table, and as much as his tried to not be obvious, he was glaring blatantly in front of him. Uzumaki-san, asked a voice that was nearly missed by Naruto. Uzumaki-san, are you okay? The voice knocked Naruto out of his stupor. Yes, I'm sorry about that, Tsubaki-san. Focusing back on the vice president of the school, Naruto gave her his best smile. I am incredibly honored to be considered for this position, but I'm afraid that I simply don't have enough time to be joined the student council. Please thank Sona Keicho for me, and I apologize for any inconvenience I've caused. His eyes kept glancing back at the table a small distance away. I understand, but if you ever change your mind, please let us know. The student council can really use someone like you. Naruto gave a curt bow, you flatter me, Tsubaki-san. Good day. You too, Tsubaki-san. Naruto, as discreetly as he could manage, sat down to the nearest table as his colleague walked away, hiding behind the other students, his eyes glancing over. His anger was coming back rapidly at the sight. It was just another simple day at school. It was nearly July, and their exams were very close. Classrooms and the libraries are filled with students studying and desperately memorizing what they need for their final exams. But in the midst of studying with her club, Rias noticed that the number one student and local genius, her boyfriend, was sitting just a few tables down and glancing over at her. It was no secret to her, or anybody in their school that Naruto didn't need much time to study. The lessons and textbooks seemed to call out to him, and he could easily understand comprehend and analyze all sort of information incredibly fast. So to Rias, it was only too obvious that he was staring at her. At first she didn't know why. 
She would study with her club every exam season. Akino and her would usually study together, with Kiba helping Kaneko if she needed help. Then Rias realized the reason. They had a new member join their club, Hayadu Ise, another local story. But instead of a local genius, he was a local pervert that was good at nothing but staring at girls. They were all studying, but Rias knew Ise spent most of his time staring at her, and Naruto noticed. Rias could only grin at the realization, Naruto was jealous. She prioritized Naruto over anything, so she quickly excused herself and ordered her club to keep studying. As she stood, she almost laughed when Naruto jolted from his seat and tried to sneak out of the library, as if trying to hide from her. Shaking her head, Rias quickly caught up to him and slipped her hand into his, entwining their fingers together. Well, what a surprise to see you here, Naruto-kun. Naruto chuckled sheepishly and scratched the back of his head, oh hey, Rias-chan. I didn't see you there. Stop it, she muttered as she wrapped her arms around his, I saw you staring over at me. Much to Rias glee, Naruto frowned. I wasn't the only one staring at you. Are you jealous? Rias' grin only grew when her boyfriend looked away. You don't have to be jealous. Naruto crossed his arms, I'm not jealous. He hesitantly looked back at her, I just don't like it. You're adorable. Why did you let that guy join your club? Naruto couldn't help but ask as they made their way out of the school, finally away from curious students who enjoyed to stare at them. He and his friends are known to peep at girls and stuff. You know he's going to stare at you like a piece of meat. Issei is perverted, but it doesn't matter. Rias tightened her hand around Naruto's, he's just a member of my club. It doesn't matter how much he stares at me, I will never give him the time of day. She went on her tippy toes and Naruto on the cheek, he's not my perfect, idiotic boyfriend. You are. Naruto brought an arm around Rias' shoulders and pulled her close. I know that, but I still hate it when he looks at you like that. It makes me angry just thinking about it. Rias laughed as she wrapped her arms around his neck, angry. Do you really feel angry? Naruto bit onto his lower lip, yes, of course I do. Rias happily sighed, well, while I'm amazed and happy that you can actually feel anger, there is nothing to be angry about. She leaned in and ed him as loving and tenderly as she could before she whispered against his trembling lips, I won't give anyone the time of day except for you. She nibbled on his lips as she continued, you know that you belong to me, so please also know that I belong to you. Naruto felt his heart melt in his chest at her words, only to you, my sweet Naruto. Rias, he whispered as he lightly returned the. But I am still really happy that you got angry because of this. Rias giggled into the, so manly. Naruto couldn't help but laugh before pressing his lips hard against hers. Dear Lord, I love this woman. Oh Satan, I love this man. Unknown to the happy couple, they were being watched from deep below. Through the dimensions into twilight, their adjoined hands and lips were on clear display. Atop a crimson throne forged from rubies was Sirzex Lucifer, devil king of the underworld and leader of the four Satans, but most importantly, Rias Grimori's older brother. Clad in his formal armor, Sirzex looked prepared for war, the stern expression on his face looked as if he was strategizing. Kuo Town was in a precarious position, as the Satan could destroy its entirety with a mere snap on his fingers. But thankfully, he didn't. Sirzex Sama, came the voice of his queen, Graphia Lucifuge through a small magic circle that hovered on his hand. It has been done, the marriage contract has been broken. Lord Grimori has returned to the estate, though he has asked me to tell you of his trepidation. He is concerned that this will cause a major rift between the Grimori and Phoenix. The red Satan sighed and gave a nod, the long red hair that he shared with Rias blowing in the wind. I understand his worries, but this is a chance we must take. This is a huge gamble, Sirzex Sama. A larger white magic circle appeared next to Lucifer and Graphia manifested from it. Venalina Sama had worked for some time to organize this marriage contract, and all of the underworld were rejoiced at this union. Razor Phoenix may only be the third son, but he was willing to marry into the Grimori family. Rias Sama would have led the family and brought the Phoenix blood into our future generations. Sirzex turned to face his queen and smiled, I am aware of all that, Graphia. Rias' marriage to Razor makes perfect sense, but now I am in search of a far greater alliance. Graphia turned to stare onto the screen, sensing Rias' power signature and that of someone else's. Their union is an act against nature, Sirzex Sama. Or it will become a bridge that will connect our two factions. Sirzex Sama, 
I, for now, talk to me as my wife, honey. Sears X reached for Grafia's hand and pulled her close, tell me what you think. The ultimate queen sighed and held onto her husband's arm, I really don't think this will work, dear. We have been forbidding the union of devils and those of the church for centuries, and have prosecuted those who have broken that law. For the sister of Lucifer to be with someone like that, it is unthinkable. The importance of their positions is precisely why I think this will work. Sears X smiled down at the young couple, who was still attached by the hip. They represent the next generation of leaders of both our worlds. We cannot forbid them like we do low-class devils or everyday exorcists. If their union will succeed, they will forever bind the underworld with heaven, rejoining our two worlds that were once whole. This may cause a war, or a marriage that will end all wars. The Satan ed his wife and held her close, this may give us peace, a world where angels and devils are no longer enemies. Grafia sighed, I understand and see your point, and I can see that this is possible. But resting the fate of our two worlds on the shoulders of two teenagers in love is far too risky. Their relationship is that of a first passion. They are discovering their bodies and realizing their childish dreams, and it might not last. Well, we did. Sears X smiled and ed his wife's forehead, our marriage stabilized the old and new devil factions, and I am willing to bet that Rius can do it too. I really can't convince you otherwise, can I? The Satan laughed, as wrong as it is for me to say this, have a little faith in them, honey. He looked back at the screen and smiled at the happy and blissful grin on his baby sister's face, they look good together, and I haven't seen Rhea smile like that ever since she was a small child. Grafia sighed again and gave a small smile at her baby sister's smile, Kasama might have wanted the Phoenix regeneration power in our family, but imagine if Rhea and this boy had children. Sears X smiled as his wife bit her lip, the power of destruction combined with the power of creation. That will be a force to be reckoned with. Will that even be possible? The Satan chuckled, we'll see in time. He ed his wife, now, please give Rias a call and tell her that her engagement has been called off. Grafia nodded with a bow, hi, Sears X Sama. After a rambunctious round of afternoon delight, Rias found herself warm and snuggly, a thick comforter wrapped around her. She woke from her good dream to a better reality. Naruto's small bedroom was more comfortable than any luxurious suite in the underworld. She found herself in love with her new second home. It was smaller than her maid's bedrooms in the underworld, but there was nowhere else she would rather be. Hey, whispered a soft voice, have a nice nap. Rhea smiled as Naruto stood to the side of the bed, wearing an apron. Yep, she replied with a smile, the blanket sliding off her bare body as she sat up. Naruto leaned down and ed her softly on the lips, I made dinner. He let his hand sink into her soft skin, are you hungry? Rias could only smile and wrap her around Naruto's neck, pulling him close. As lovingly she could, Rias pressed her lips onto Naruto's, slowing massaging them. Her tongue attacked his mouth as her arms pulled him further down, letting him fall on top of her. She shivered when his hands started to wander to their usual favorite places, caressing her thin waist and cupping her soft s. It wasn't until he was out of breath that she broke there. She stared into his azure blue eyes and smiled. You are far too good to me, Naruto. Naruto ed her again and smiled against her lips, no, I'm not. He pecked her lips again before pulling her upright, come on, I made your favorite. Rias held onto Naruto's warm hand and left the bed, staring at him from behind. I'm going to marry this man. Far above the clouds, beyond the limitations of mankind's arrogant technology was heaven, the home of the angels and the origin of the universe. It was at that single point that everything that will ever be manifested into existence. At this one place, the first words were spoken and the first flash of light illuminated the void. Through a journey of seven days, the universe was created, and life burst forth with that single point at the epicenter. Standing tall as the hope and dream of billions of followers of God, heaven floated high in the sky, resting on clouds, timeless, eternal. Billions of righteous souls rested peacefully and happily at heaven's third level, protected by the first level's defense and the second level's observation. The third level was so vast that it was immeasurable, but at its center was a small stone house, with one holy soul staring into a crystal ball. I knew I'd find you here, sister. Michael, the archangel of heaven stood at the door of the small house, smiling kindly at his sister Gabriel. Gabriel turned away from her brother, I'm still mad at you, don't talk to me like nothing has happened. She scoffed when he closed the door behind him, his own golden aura illuminating the house. 
It is as we discussed, Gabriel. Learn to accept it. Michael turned his attention to the crystal ball and smiled. He looks happy. Isn't that enough to convince you that this is possible? Gabriel snapped her fingers and the crystal ball vanished with a flash of white light. He is still a baby, Michael. She looked up at her brother, a frown marring her perfect features. He has only lived for 17 years. He is a teenager in love. I won't accuse that girl of any foul intention. I agree that she doesn't know just who Naruto is yet, but regardless of that fact, it is reckless of you to allow the cradle of our family take such a risk. Naruto is our little brother, the one who was born from light. He has the power to restore heaven to its former glory and take charge of father's system. How can we just allow him to associate himself with our natural enemy? Michael sighed and sat down next to his sister, I have faith in Naruto. He placed a comforting hand on her shoulder, I know I didn't watch him as closely as you, but from what I observed, he is a benevolent, kind, and passionate young man. He is true, honest and honorable. And above all, he is observant and intelligent. Gabriel gave Michael a glance at his words, I believe that he can take care of himself. I have faith that his relationship with Rias Grimori will forge a lasting peace in the world. He's not ready, Michael. Gabriel bit her lower lip, he's still a child. He believes he is only human. He may know of a tiny portion of his powers, and he does use his eyes for good, but he is nowhere near powerful enough to handle any devils. We will tell him the truth soon enough, and he will need to train. Until we know he is capable of fending for himself, we can't let him be alone in the midst of devils. He will not be alone, retorted Michael with a smile. You're letting me go visit him. The archangel grimaced when he had to crush his sister's hopes. No, you know we can't show ourselves right now. Gabriel huffed and crossed her arms, turning away from her brother again. But we have many people on our side, and I think I've found the perfect person to be by Naruto's side at this moment. Gabriel glanced at Michael, who are you talking about? Asia Argento. Rias combed her fingers through Naruto's hair, smiling as he rested his head on her lap. As spiky as his golden tresses were, they were surprisingly soft and silky. Her hands soon moved with her thumbs brushing against his cheeks, then tracing his jawline. But Naruto's hands reached up and held onto hers, leading them back to his head. Rias giggled, you like it when I play with your hair. Naruto nodded, it's so relaxing. She knew he was tired, and for good reason. School was busy enough, but Naruto also had to worry about his clinic and his constantly growing clientele. The lines of patients were only getting longer, and no matter how much Naruto tried to organize or allocate certain days to certain people, the sick won't listen. Her perfect idiot was too good to refuse any patient. What's your family like? Asked Naruto suddenly. Rias rose a brow, my family. Yeah, Naruto snuggled deeper into her soft and warm thighs, you haven't talked about them before. She smiled, my family is great, I love them. Naruto ed her thigh as she continued, my father is a carefree and emotional man, everything is an open book with him. He loves to dote on me when I was younger, and now that I don't let him, he spends his time doting on my little nephew. Rias smiled fondly at the thought of her father, my mother on the other hand is strict. She makes sure that I study in school and in other lessons. She isn't as loving as my father, but she loves us. That's really nice, whispered Naruto, so you also have a sibling and a nephew? Rias nodded, yep, I have one older brother. He dotes on me even more than my father, and is one of the goofiest and most loving people I know. You narrowly beat him out. She leaned down to him between his brows. He married my sister-in-law and they had a son, my nephew. He's already seven years old. Sounds lovely, he said, you must have been very happy growing up with him. Very happy. Rias kept massaging Naruto's head, smiling. What about you? You haven't said much about your family either. Naruto chuckled, you'd be surprised at how similar our families are. My dad is a family man, through and through. He works from home as a meteorologist, but his work hours are very short. He spends his time taking care of us and learning and trying new food. We'd used to drive around town tasting every good restaurant he found, then he'd try to make our favorites at home. Rias smiled at the happy expression on her lover's face. Now my mom is great, but she's a teacher and she scares all her students. She's really strict to them and apparently they all think she has a very scary expression when she is silent, but I've never seen it. I really look forward to meeting them, whispered Rias. They'll love you, but my sister might take a while to get used to. Rias chuckled, why? She's, eccentric. Naruto looked up from Rias' lap with a smile, 
No matter how old I get or how much I am taller than her, she treats me like I'm a baby. She's also very affectionate. She likes to hug in me all the time, and now that I'm grown up, she likes to jump on my back for a piggyback ride. Naruto chuckled, she's a bit much, but I love her. Rias giggled, that sounds like Serifal Sama with Sona. Suddenly, Naruto's phone started to vibrate and he looked to see his sister's name. Huh, speak of the devil. Then Rias' phone started to ring as well. What do you know, me too? Seeing the silver glow on her screen, Rias knew who was calling and stood from the couch. Sorry, I have to take this. She ed him softly on the lips and left the room. Naruto smiled fondly at his lover before answering his own call. Hey, Nei chan. The usual chirp of his sister's voice came immediately, Naru-chan, I miss you. Naruto smiled, but she continued before he could speak, now that you're with your girlfriend all the time, you don't call me anymore. You know that's not true, Nei chan He could practically see his sister's pout, I'll believe that when you actually call every night. I get that you have a girlfriend now and it's natural for you to want to spend time with her, but don't forget to call home. It's been a while since you've called mom and dad, and they worry about you. I'll call them later tonight. Good, and tell them about your little girlfriend. I'm sure dad will be happy, but you can be sure that mom will interrogate you about it even more than I did. She giggled into the call. Naruto chuckled, I know she will. Gabriel sighed in the call, but never mind that, I have other news. Naruto was a little surprised at how serious his sister sounded, what is it? Did something happen? Well. You know how mom takes care of her students sometimes. Yeah, one of them was expelled from her school because she was caught helping someone she wasn't supposed to help. Knowing her brother, she quickly added, it doesn't make sense, I know. Since her school was basically an orphanage, if she is expelled, she would have nowhere to go, so mom decided to take her in. Naruto smiled, that's great. Mom loves her students, so I'm not surprised she'd do this. That's not all, though. Mom thinks that Italy may not be a good place for the girl, so mom is wondering if you can take care of her in Japan. Huh, you should have a lot of space in your place and you have a spare bedroom, so it shouldn't be a problem. Mom and dad will send over more money so you can accommodate. Naruto scratched the back of his head, it's not that I mind, but this is really sudden, Nei chan Oh, don't worry, her name is Asia Argento, and she is an adorable, innocent, darling little girl. She has a big heart and a very kind soul, so I'm sure you two will get along very well. Gabriel smiled, she is still shocked and a little sad about her expulsion, so please do you best to make her feel welcomed. He sighed, sure, I'll do what I can. I just need to tell my girlfriend about it, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Okay then, Gabriel giggled, Asia Chan will be flying over in a few days, so be sure to pick her up at the airport. That soon, he paced around the room. I'll need to time to get everything ready. I'm sorry to spring this on you, Naru Chan, but the sooner Asia Chan comes the better. Also, I expect you to help her with school and making friends. She's new to Japan, so she'll definitely need help with her Japanese. And as cute as she is, she is a child, so make sure to protect her from any boy who tries to woo her. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose, I don't exactly have a lot of free time, Nei Chan. I'm sure you can accommodate. She said sternly, this is our new little sister, Naru-chan, so you have to take care of her. He sighed, I will take care of her. Good, she chirped, I'm sure mom will tell you more about Asia-chan when you call her, so I'll let you get to that. Good night, Naru-chan. Night, Nei-chan. In Naruto's mind, it was just like his family to impose on him so suddenly. His parents would often go out of their way to help other people, and often took in people in need. His mother would provide free education for people who couldn't afford official schooling and his father would cook for many homeless shelters. With his own clinic for people in need, Naruto could only agree with his parents. He walked to his bedroom and knocked on the door, Rias chan are you done with your call? Naruto just hoped that having a new sister around wouldn't impose on his life too much, and really prayed that Rias wouldn't mind. But as his mind tried to think of ways to explain the situation to Rias, his bedroom door suddenly sprung open. A red blur was all he saw before Rias jumped onto him, wrapping her arms and legs around him as tightly as she could. Whoa, what happened? Naruto chuckled as he held her securely in his arms, but grew concerned at the tears in her eyes. Rias, what is going on? Rias ed him hard on the lips before answering, I'm free. Huh? 
Huh. Now I'm all yours, Naruto. All yours. A shiver ran down Naruto's back as his mother's voice pierced through his soul. Panting and out of breath, he endured and ran into Kuo Airport, almost forgetting to tip the taxi driver. Desperately grasping onto the sign he had made the night before, he dodged the emerging crowd of crying parents and embracing friends. Having memorized the flight number coming from Italy, Naruto's heart further sank when he saw on the display that the plane had arrived over 15 minutes ago. With shaking hands, Naruto held his phone against his ear, I I'm so sorry, mom. This is not how I raised you, young man. A few years away from home and you've lost all punctuality. Why were you late in the first place? For the life of Naruto, he could never lie to his mother. I I overslept. He could practically see the vein on his mother's forehead bulging and pulsating. Uzumaki Naruto, if you keep this up, I swear I will fly over to Japan and fix you myself. Wiping a bead of sweat from his brow, Naruto winced at his mother's every threat. Inwardly, he was kicking himself, but couldn't blame himself too much. As a young man in his prime, it was understandable if he made some errors in judgments, especially when it involved his breathtakingly stunning and irresistibly sexy girlfriend bouncing on top of him while moaning his name. But he knew better than to tell his mother that, he had no desire to die when his life was so enjoyable and happy. So, this morning, Naruto jolted from his bed as the sunlight hit his eyes, and for the first time in a long time, left his home without an early morning delight with his Rias. With barely enough time to brush his teeth and no time to grab clean clothes or comb his hair, he jumped into the first taxi he came across and rushed to the airport. So, in yesterday's school uniform and bed hair, Naruto held onto his sign with the name Asia Argento written on it, and prayed that in the middle of the crowd, he could pick out his new sister. And it was like that, in crumpled clothing and messy hair that Naruto met his sister. E excuse me, I, I am Asia Argento. Naruto's eyes widened a little, quite surprised at the angel standing before him. She was everything he would expect from a sister of the church, even more so, in fact. With a beautiful silk prayer shawl draped over her flowing blonde hair, she shyly peeked with her emerald green eyes, her hands neatly folded, holding onto her one luggage in front of her. Her cheeks were red as she forced a shy smile at her new brother, and it made her look utterly adorable. Hello, Asia Chan, it is very nice to finally meet you. Naruto calmly extended his free hand, I am Uzumaki Naruto, your new brother, I guess. Asia squeaked and dropped her luggage when she shook his hand with both her own, blushing at the touch. I it's very nice to meet you as well, N Naruto san. I I'm sorry if I caused you any inconvenience. Don't be silly, I am very happy to have you. Naruto, is that Asia Chan? His mother's voice reminded him that he was still holding onto his phone, yes, mom. Don't worry, Asia Chan found me. Naruto smiled at Asia as he handed her his phone, here you go, Asia Chan. Mom would like to speak with you. Asia shakily held onto the phone and softly spoke into it, H hello, Griselda Sama. Naruto chuckled as he watched the girl bite her lips at the slip up, S sorry, I mean M mother. Her blush deepened at Naruto's laughter, making him a little guilty, but ultimately enjoyed seeing it. Yes, everything went very well. Yes, I have my luggage. And no it's okay, I can carry it myself. Naruto took that as his K to take the heavy luggage bag that was still on the ground, calming her attempts to stop him in frantic face with a kind smile. Yes, I will be fine, mother. T thank you so much for everything. Asia found it hard to keep eye contact with Naruto as she returned him his phone, M mother would like to talk to you, Naruto-san. With another smile, Naruto nodded. Thanks. Holding his phone to his ear, he never stopped smiling at Asia. Hey mom. Yes, everything is fine now. I have all the forms ready, so as soon as you and dad fax me your signed copies, I'll enroll Asia Chan into Kuo Academy. Yes, I understand, keep all the boys away from Asia Chan. Naruto felt a little bad for teasing Asia, but she was too adorable to leave alone, especially when she looked like a tomato. Okay, goodbye, mom. Ending the call, Naruto gave Asia another smile, mom says goodbye and wishes you the best. Asia looked down with a small smile, thank you. I really can't say how grateful I am to you and your family, Naruto-san. God bless you all. Gently placing a hand onto Asia's shoulder, our family, Asia-chan. You don't have to thank us for taking care of family. She gave him another shy smile that made him chuckle, now let's get you settled in at home. 
Let's recount this month's contracts, started Akino, taking her responsibilities of vice president seriously now that her leader was out of commission. I have nine new contracts, Kiba Kun has six, Kaniko Chan has five, but Issei Kun still has none. Akino placed her tablet on her lap and frowned at the pawn. Issei Kun, this is your second month without results. We may have to retrain you so this continues. The pervert of Kuo Academy looked sheepish as he rubbed the back of his head, s sorry, Akino san. Kiba kun has been doing this for a long time, so you should take advantage of that and ask him for advice. You may be the same age, but he is your senior in this peerage, so don't hold back from asking. Issei gave the handsome prince of Kuo the stink eye, but remained silent. Otherwise, Kaniko chan and Kiba kun did very well this month, well done. The rook and knight bowed, thank you. Fukubucho, they said in unison, using Akino's official title when in meetings. Akino nodded, but sighed when her master was still silent with a huge smile on her face. Bucho, do you have anything to add? Rias gave no answer, but just continued to smile, occasionally giggling to herself. Bucho. The Grimori heiress was finally knocked out of her thoughts and had to look around to find herself, yes, what is it? Akino sighed again, do you have anything to add? Rias merely smiled radiantly at her family, not at all. Great job, everyone. Fighting the urge to rub her temples, Akino took over again. All right then, you are all free to go. Please keep in mind that while getting new contracts are very important, it is also impertinent that we maintain our academic success. Remember that our guys as a research club is an extracurricular activity, and we must also be students. Akino had no desire for Rias' mother to ever find out that their school averages were slipping because of their newest member. Thanks for your hard work and I'll see you all tomorrow. Hi. Akino stared at Rias as the rest of the peerage left, but it wasn't until she heard the door shut behind her that she started to speak. Is anybody home? Akino snapped her fingers in front of Rias' face and resisted the urge to flick her on the forehead. Rias. Rias broke out into another grin as she looked up at her best friend, what is it? Now that the rest of their family was gone, Akino rubbed her temples with a sigh. I get that you're ecstatic that you're finally free from the Fenex family, but you have to help me out here. You've been giggling like a crazy person for the past day and it's starting to creep me out. Rias giggled again as she stood and entangled her arms with Akino's. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm just so happy. The king and queen walked over to the couch and Rias pulled them down, this has just been the best year ever. Akino couldn't help but smile. Her best friend was happy enough to drop her usual mature facade and was acting her age. It's our last year of high school, the peerage is as close and strong as ever, we're getting a lot of new contracts, and I'm finally free from that pompous bastard. Rias raised her hands up to celebrate, her smile only growing. Yes, 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 muttered Akino with a smirk, the birds are singing, the sky is blue, the grass is green, and you get to have mind-numbing sex with your boyfriend every night. Rias winked. Every morning, too, actually. Akino rolled her eyes, though not this morning, unfortunately. Naruto had to pick up his new adopted sister at the airport. Oh, how terrible. Akino loudly groaned, a whole 12 hours without your perfect little boyfriend. How will you ever survive? Do I hear a little jealousy in your voice? Rias smirked at her sister in everything but blood. Crossing her arms, Akino gave Rias a smirk. It's even better that you're both so lovey deve it makes me taking him for myself all the more satisfying. With a challenging glance, she continued, don't get too comfortable, I will have an affair with Naruto-kun yet. Rias scoffed and whipped her hair to the side, you and I both know that Naruto would never do that. And I am watching you, I have my familiar looking out for Naruto, so if you ever plan something, I'll know right away. We'll see. A knock on the door broke the girls from their banter. Come in, announced Rias ever so cheerfully. The double wooden door opened to reveal the entirely of the student council. In the very front was Sona Sidiri, the student council president, the heir to the Sidiri family in the underworld, and again very much like Rias, the younger sister of Seraphal Leviathan, a satan of the underworld. Beside her was her friend and queen, Shinra Tsubaki. Then their group extended back four rows, each one line up neatly after the other in terms of ranking, and all had their hands neatly folded in front of them. Though Sona's new pawn, Genshiru Saji looked to be quite out of place and obviously new. Thank you for seeing me, politely greeted Sona before she looked back at her peerage, including her queen. Wait for me out here. Hi, Keicho. Sona, greeted Rias happily, 
making Akano sigh as the other king closed the double doors. Sona fixed her glasses as she placed a sound barrier on the door, prevent any sound to come in or out of the room. Rias, Akano. Seeing how they were alone, Akano rested her back against the couch, I'm guessing you've heard the news. The great news, chirped Rias. Sona gave a small giggle as she sat down next to her lifelong friends. Yes, I just heard from mother this morning. Apparently it's caused a huge uproar in the underworld. Many people were excited about our Crimson Ruin princess marrying Riser Phoenix, and many of them were disappointed. Akano nodded as she continued, but regardless, it has been officially announced that the betrothal has been rescinded and both parties have now regained the status of unattached. I can only imagine the amount of new marriage proposals flooding the Gramary Castle this morning, muttered Akano, preparing three new cups of tea. Venelena Sama will have a very busy day. More like weeks, added Sona. It's been years since Rias has been available, and every single noble family will be offering their sons to her. Akano looked at her best friend, who was still smiling like a crazy person. I don't think she's worried. Sona sipped on her tea before she turned to Rias, so, how did you do it? Akano nodded along, yeah, how did you do it? I honestly have no idea, said Rias with a shrug. I randomly got a call from Onisama last night and she told me that Onisama and Odo-sama has officially called off the engagement with the Phoenix family. She bit her bottom lip lightly, now that I actually think about it, I really don't know what caused it. Akano shook her head in disbelief at the normally meticulous and collected Rias. You didn't even think of that until now? Rias looked rather sheepish, not really. Then what in the underworld were you doing last nig? Akano stopped herself, never mind. Sona spoke as she gently blew on her tea. Maybe they found out about your lover? Rias flinched a little at the possibility. There is a celibacy clause written into the engagement contract, and the fact that you gave your virginity to someone else is likely to break the contract. Sona gave Rias a look, but of course you already knew that. What are you implying? Akano shook her head. No, that can't be the reason. While that certainly can void the engagement, it would cause a much better uproar from Venelay Nasama. If that really was the reason, she'd come up here herself to deal with it. Rias couldn't help but shiver at the thought, yeah, and they couldn't have found out. Sona scoffed, you haven't exactly been discreet, Rias. I knew about it the very next day. The Cedary sighed, it would be strange if your parents don't know about your new boyfriend. We all know they send their familiars to check on us all the time, not to mention our older siblings watching us. Sona shook her head, I honestly thought that you knew and used that to your advantage. Rias gave her friend a slight glare, are you saying that I was trying to get caught? Not anymore, but that was what I thought you were doing. Well no, I didn't expect that to happen. Rias sighed and rubbed her head, I honestly didn't even think about that. She admitted to herself that she hasn't been the most focused person as of late, which was obviously because of Naruto and their amazing passion, and it was slightly disconcerting. I will admit that it certainly is possible that Naruto is possibly why my parents called off the engagement. It would embarrass the Gramary family if it was publicly stated that the marriage was cancelled because I lost my virginity before the wedding, and they cancelled before anyone found out. But regardless, I am happy of such a turnout. Sona sighed, if that is the case, I'm sure your parents will contact you soon. You are Lucifer Sama's sister, so whatever man you chose to be with will become quite important in the underworld. Your parents will at least want to meet him, logically stated Sona while thinking, that is if they don't kill him on the spot. Well, that's no surprise. Akano turned to her king, you have been planning to turn Naruto-kun into a devil, right? Rias nodded, but rather hesitantly, yes, I have. Sona crossed her arms, you managed to get to Uzumaki-san before I could. I was hoping to get him to join the student council. Ignoring Sona's comment, Rias leaned back against the couch. I just hope he can take it. She bit her lips as her worry for Naruto ruined her mood. He's very, pure, and I'm not sure how he'll take to the life of a devil and his family raised him as a Catholic, so that's another thing to worry about. Akano gave her a small smile, I guess in the beginning all you wanted to do was to corrupt him, so it makes sense that he's someone like that. But in the end, you're getting the chance to officially corrupt him. I comma I don't want to him change too much. Rias sighed, he's perfect the way he is now. I don't want to corrupt him anymore. Really? Asked the queen. Rias gave a nod, I love him the way he is now. Regardless, Sona fixed her glasses again, you're going to have to decide soon. This is your room, Asia Chan. Still holding onto his sister's luggage, Naruto happily showed Asia her new room. He had spent an entire day putting together a new bed and cleaning out the old closet, 
he nearly didn't have enough time to clean the carpet, but he managed to get the old white to emerge from a dusty gray. It looked a little plain, but it was clean and fresh. I did my best and cleaned everything up. He smiled at the still blushing girl who hesitantly stepped into the room. I bought some new towels for you and a new bathrobe, so please feel free to use them. The closet is totally yours to use, and if you want, we can go shopping later so we can get you some things to decorate your room. T thank you, Naruto-san. Just Naruto is fine, okay? Naruto smiled and placed her luggage against the wall, we're going to be living together now, you don't have to be so formal. He led the girl into the living room, which was clean spotless. Naruto prided himself in his cleanliness, courtesy of his strict and terrifying mother. The carpet was a fluff of white, and there wasn't a speck of dust on the furniture. Fresh cut flowers brightened up the room as the yellow curtains were parted to let in the sunlight, and shone on Asia as she sat down. Naruto could tell that she was used to living in an abbey. She sat at the edge of the couch, her legs neatly closed and tilted to the side. Her hands were folded on her lap, occasionally rubbing against each other. She still refused to make direct eye contact and her blush was only becoming more heated, but she did manage to sit down close to Naruto. Relax, Asia Chan. Naruto gave a soft chuckle, would you like anything to drink? Actually, what is your favorite drink? Favorite? She asked as she peeked up from her shawl, I am not sure, I guess H hot cocoa. I'll make one now. Asia frantically tried to stop him, but he silenced her with a pat on the head, seriously Asia Chan, you're my little sister now, so it's fine if I make you a drink. Naruto stepped into the open kitchen, gathering the mix on the countertop that had a clear view of the living room. I don't make cocoa too often, but I'll get good at it soon. Asia finally managed a smile, you're really kind, Naruto-san, just like your mother. Our mother, Asia Chan. Yes, the girl managed to whisper, I will do my best to not inconvenience you. I know I am imposing here. Placing the hot drink down, Naruto poked Asia on her forehead. Hey, none of that anymore. Asia was quite stunned and didn't know how to react as Naruto continued. We may not actually be related, but that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not sure if mom told you, but I am also one of her adopted children. Are really? Yep, mom and dad adopted me when I was a baby. Blood relation may be important to others, but it doesn't mean anything to us. It's our bond that is important, okay? You're a part of the family now. You're not a guest or any sort of inconvenience. You're staying with me, your brother. Tears welled up in Asia's eyes as she nodded, thank you, Naruto-san. Naruto smiled and patted her head, good, now give the hot cocoa a try. Asia lightly blew on the hot drink and sipped at the edge, a rosy smile on her face, it's really good. Patting her head again, Naruto stood. Great, I'm going to get dinner ready, so just relax and take a look around. Feel free to unpack your things in your room or take a shower. Naruto stopped her before she could speak, no, I don't need help for dinner, not when you're tired from such a long flight. Are you sure? Of course, it's nothing fancy, but it's my girlfriend's favorite. Asia peeped up from under her shawl, G girlfriend? Naruto's smile widened at the mention of Rias, yep, she'll be coming over later, so I'll introduce you. Don't worry, she's really friendly. Oh okay. Naruto was pulled from his thoughts as his cell phone rang in his pocket. Fumbling into his pants, he was disappointed that it wasn't Rias. Hello, Naruto here. Naruto-san, help us. He recognized the voice of one of his main sponsors and was shocked at the desperate cry and quickly focused. I have no idea what happened, but but I think they're dead. S someone attacked us, and he he, everyone is dead. Hiro-san, calm down. Naruto closed his eyes and breathed, tell me where you were and I'll come immediately. W were at the Honshu overpass. P please hurry, Naruto-san. There, there is blood everywhere. I'm on my way. Asia hesitantly approached her brother, is everything okay? Naruto patted the girl on the head again and forced a smile, yes, some of my friends just got in some trouble, so I'm going to go help them out. Don't worry about a thing. Just stay here and unpack and rest. I'll be back to finish cooking dinner. He quickly slipped on his jacket and packed his usual first aid kit. I'm sorry to leave you here alone, but I'll make sure to come back as soon as I can. Asia nodded, it's okay, but be careful, Naruto-san. Opening the front door, Naruto gave Asia one more smile. Lock the door behind me, okay? With that, he ran for his bike and rushed away. Curling a strand of red hair around her finger, Rhea silently stared down at her desk, her eyes gazing upon the few chess pieces that lay scattered on the wood. She held her hand to her chest and bit her lip and almost trembled, 
shifting and turning in her chair. No matter how much you think about this, there are only two options available. Either you stop seeing Naruto, or you keep seeing him and turn him into a devil. There is no way your parents will ever let you be so close with just a human, and I doubt you would want to see him grow old and die before your eyes. Akano sighed and sat down next to Rias, it's a pretty easy choice if you ask me. It's not that simple. Rias sighed, it's just, just that, she sighed again, I love him, I love him more than anything. I also know him very well, and I know that the life of a devil isn't something for him. He, he is the most genuine and pure person I have ever known, and I can't even imagine what would happen to him if he was suddenly forced to feel like a devil. Rias hugged her knees and looked frail, I don't want him to hate me. Akano reached for Rias' hand, I don't know him that well and I haven't really seen the two of you together, but if he loves you just as much as you love him, he will never hate you. Maybe before I do anything, I should tell him everything. Tell me about me, about us, and what we are. If I show him everything, maybe he will accept everything easier. I'll, I'll give him a choice. I'll ask if would want to be with me forever. If I give him a choice, we'll both feel better about it. What if he says no? Rias couldn't help but turn away as she felt a stab of pain in her heart. I don't know. I comma I don't know. Sighing as she stared through the window, Sona moved closer to her friends and sat down alongside them. I don't know Uzumaki-san, but it is easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. You cannot afford to waste any more time if you truly want to be with him. Your parents are already sifting through marriage proposals by the hundred, so you have to hurry if you have a personal preference. Not to mention that even if Uzumaki-san really does resent you in the beginning, you'll have thousands of years to make it up to him. Sona crossed her arms before she continued, the most important thing is that you'll have time to make things right. Rias silently nodded in agreement. Also, Naruto-kun being your boyfriend can also put him in danger. Who knows what the Fenix family or all your other suitors will do to him if they find out he's just a human. At least if you turn him into a devil, we can train him so he can protect himself. Akano stroked Rias' hair and tenderly held her hand, you still have Bishop, Rook, and Night Pieces left, and Naruto would make a great addition to our family. You're right, you're both right. Rias took a deep breath and smiled at her friends. Let's do it. Suddenly, a poof of smoke alerted Rias and she was surprised to see her familiar. The small bat flapped its wings frantically as it communicated with its owner. Akano and Sona had no idea what was happening, but grew concerned at the widened eyes of Rias. What is it, Rias? asked Sona. Rias was shaking, and Naruto, before Sona or Akano would react, a red magic circle appeared underneath Rias and she vanished through the teleportation circle. Honshu Overpass was only a few hundred meters away from Naruto's clinic, and he would pass by it almost every day, but it never looked so bleak. Even in the cloudy afternoon, the sky was unusually dark, there was a strange chill in the air and an odd tint everywhere. It wasn't cold, but Naruto saw his breath. And before long, his blood ran cold at the sight before him. Underneath the bustling overpass was a pile of limbs, scattered around the pavement that was bathed in blood. In paralyzing detail, Naruto could see the severed arteries and veins dragging along the ground. Dear Lord, these weren't cut off, they were ripped off. As he sped closer to the scene, he found other types of wounds bullet wounds, and some sort of slash wound with a blade. What kind of Yakuza brawl was this? Naruto's eyes widened when he saw someone's heart still beating. Hiro san. He ran toward the man who funded his clinic for the past year and was horrified to see him with only one arm left. The man was wide awake, obviously in shock. His breathing was rapid as his blood loss slowly killed his body, but he was still clinging onto life. Naruto immediately jumped off his bike and rushed to his side, throwing his supplies to the ground in haste. Can you hear me? He immediately worked on closing the open wounds on his stump of an arm but most of his blood was already drained. Hiro-san, stay with me. N Naruto, the man managed to whisper through his rapid heaving, H he was a M monster. Don't speak, Hiro-san. Conserve your energy, just try to breath as steadily as you can. Naruto scrambled for his keys, I can close your wounds, but we have to get some blood in you right now. I couldn't even see him, but he just kept coming at us, the man was screaming and blood curled form his lips, he ripped my men apart, I tried to shoot him, but he was so fast, I didn't even see him when he pulled my arm off. Naruto felt his own heart rate soar as the man spoke. He wasn't human. With his one good arm, he pulled Naruto down by his collar and whispered, I comma I think he is still here. W we have to get you fixed, Hiro-san. 
Naruto was left breathless and felt his hands shake, stop talking. Gee get me out of her, Naruto felt a chill run down his spine as Hiro suddenly stopped talking. He watched as his patient's eyes widened in horror at something behind him. And Naruto nearly screamed when someone whispered into his ear. Well, who are you? Naruto saw his own adrenaline pump through his veins and immediately felt his reality slow down. As if moving out of reflex, he jolted from the ground and jumped away from whoever was behind him, but to his horror, all he saw when he turned back was the glimmer of steel as a blade arched past his face, almost cutting his eyes. He reeled back again, but managed to catch himself before he fell onto his back. So again, he ran backwards, his eyes never moving from the man standing in front of him. Huh, you move better than the rest of them. Who are you? Naruto commended himself for his steady voice, but his heart was beating so fast that he felt his vision become blurry. All he could see was the man's shoulders shaking as a psychotic laugh pierced through the darkness. Why did you do this? Oi, it wasn't my fault that these people were so rude, all I did was ask them where I could find this doctor everyone was talking about, and they made fun of me. That's not nice, I was curious about this doctor they say who could cure any wound, and can see into everyone's soul. He sounds like an interesting fellow. Why are you looking for him, oh, do you know him? The man grinned, if you can reach him. Can you please tell him that freed selzen is looking for him naruto gulped but that's not possible with shaking hand he pointed to one of hero's men ichi's dead you kill him what cried the man in a whiny voice oh man rainer sama would not be happy to hear that freed looked back at the mangled body are you sure that's the doctor because he sure didn't look too smart tapping his sword on his head he turned to face naruto actually i thought you were the doctor because i thought you were trying to save this guy right here he stepped on Hiro's shoulder, making the man whimper even when nearly unconscious. Are you sure you're not the doctor? Why yes, I'm just one of the doctor's friends. Naruto's eyes widened when the man suddenly disappeared from view. Oh well. Naruto gasped for breath, and when he looked down, he saw a sword coming out of his chest. That's too bad, but thanks anyway. The sword was pulled from his back, and Naruto fell to the ground, paining coursing through his body. You're a lot nicer than the others, but whatever, I'm in a bad mood. He raised his sword in the air, and this always makes me feel better. I can't die here. Naruto coughed as blood spewed from his mouth, Rias. I still haven't married Rias. Not like this. His vision was fading, and darkness was seeping into the corner of his eyes. Rias. Naruto. As the sword came down upon him, Naruto felt a blast of heat shot past him. Through his blackened vision, he saw a flare of red and black crash into the psychotic man, blasting him away. As the small of scorched flesh and the burn of fire filled his senses, he was rewarded with the sight of his lover. Rias? Are those wings? Still coughing out blood, Naruto stared at his girlfriend, whose eyes were burning red and bat like wings protruded from her back. A dark red aura flared around her, and the slain bodies around them were burnt to ash. But ultimately, it still made Naruto feel warm and safe. She cradled him on her lap, like she has so many times before, and was holding onto what looked like to be a chess piece. In the echoing darkness, he heard Rhea's voice, Don't worry my love, I won't ever let you die. He felt his consciousness fading, but as he heard the cries of Rhea's, he was surprised to see a golden light emerge next to him. It was bright and beautiful and divine. The light enveloped him, and he felt the pain vanish. He could no longer feel Rhea's, but he saw a pair of familiar green eyes looking down into his. Don't worry, Naruto-san, I will heal you, Asia-chan? A subtle warmth soothed Naruto's spirit as he stirred from his restless sleep. His eyes slowly parted and welcomed the wondrous sight before him. As if hovering upon a cloud, weightless and serene, Naruto gazed up at the star-studded night sky. Like his mother would sing to him when he was a child, it was like little diamonds in the sky. For once while looking into the vast infinite space of the cosmos, Naruto didn't feel small or irrelevant. Instead he felt at home, at peace, never had the world appeared so welcoming and perfect. Bathing in a soft glow he could feel around him, Naruto finally tore his gaze away from the stars and saw the small bonfire next to him. He could smell the firewood and hear the delightful crackling from the flames, its fiery tongues licking the ever-expanding stars. Beautiful, isn't it? The voice was loud, and Naruto jolted from where he laid. He realized that he had been laying sand, and he balled his feet into it trying to balance himself. Looking behind the fire, Naruto tried to find the source of the voice, and found someone sitting next to fire, cross-legged on the sand. Even with the orange glow of the flames, 
Naruto's eyes widened at the sight of the man. It was as if he was staring into a mirror into the future. The man looked like Naruto, but fully grown and matured. With the same unruly blonde hair and azure blue eyes, the man smiled at Naruto and instantly made him relax. He was dressed in a simple white t-shirt and a pair of white pants, which made Naruto notice that he was no longer dressed in his uniform and was wearing exactly what the man was. Please, sit down, Naruto. The man gestured to the sand beside him, his kind and loving smile never leaving his face. Who are you? Naruto managed to whisper, and how do you know who I am? Relax, my boy. I will explain everything to you in time, so please join me, it is quite cold tonight. Come closer to the fire. Hesitantly, and in slight disbelief of himself, Naruto slowly approached the man and sat down next to him. The man gave Naruto a very peculiar feeling, and it was almost familiar. You've really grown up, Naruto. The last time I saw you, you were still a child who could barely speak. Who are you? I have many names, but you needn't call me any of them. He smiled again as he slowly reached to pat Naruto on the head, rubbing his hair affectionately. For you are of my line, Naruto. The man then gestured to himself, and I'm sorry I could not meet you in my true form. I conjured up this appearance based on you, so it should be all right. In slight disbelief that he couldn't be suspicious of the man, Naruto could only ask, How do you know my name? The man gave a small, but hearty laugh, Of course I know your name. I'm the one who named you. Naruto's eyes widened again in surprise, but the man wasn't done. Well, Naruto was your mother's idea, but I certainly really liked it. It is much more eastern than I would expect, but it does fit very well in your case. W what are you talking about? The man simply snapped his fingers and two twigs appeared in his hands, each with a marshmallow at the end. Here, I believe this is quite popular and tastes delicious. He handed Naruto one before hovering his own over the flames. Still in shock, Naruto roasted his marshmallow. Now tell me, what is the last thing you remember? Huh? Naruto took a few seconds before he could speak, um, I was at home with Asia Chan and I got a call. His eyes slowly widened in remembrance and he almost dropped his twig in the fire. Hiro san. They were attacked. I was attacked, too. T that crazy man, he stabbed me. He frantically looked around. Oh my god, what happened? How did I get here? The man laughed and simply patted Naruto on his shoulder, instantly calming him. Relax, you are safe and everything is fine. Naruto looked down and rubbed his chest. I was stabbed here, I'm sure of it. Yes, but wounds heal, especially ours. This is just some really weird dream, right? The man sighed, I guess you are still not ready, but don't worry, you are doing a great job. Just give it a little more time and you will understand everything. Naruto was growing increasingly confused and could only remain silent, hm, it's almost time for you to go back. He smiled again, too bad, but I'll see you again soon, my boy. We'll share these marshmallows then. What? Before Naruto could react, the man poked his forehead with a smile on his face, sorry, Naruto, but until next time. Naruto woke with a desperate gasp for air, his eyes wide and in pain from the strong sunlight. Instinctively, he strained to look around, his back aching from laying on the hard cement ground. Before long, he realized that he was still at Honshu Overpass, and he reeled back at the thought of the crazy man still being near him. Using his elbows, he painfully tried to sit up, and he flinched when a soft pair of hands stopped him. N Naruto-san, please don't try to sit up. The voice was soft and timid and Naruto finally noticed his sister kneeling beside him, keeping him down as gently as she could. You're still hurt, so just lie down for now. A Asia chan The girl nodded and was clearly forcing her smile, yes, it's me, Naruto-san. Don't worry, I'm almost finished healing you. Asia gently made Naruto rest fully on the ground. You lost a lot of blood, but you should be alright now. Still panting for breath and with a rapidly beating heart, Naruto hesitantly touched his chest, but was surprised to feel no pain. There was a hole in his shirt in the exact same place he saw himself get stabbed by the crazy man, but there was no wound. Despite what Asia said, he once again forced himself up by his elbows so he could look down at his chest. He saw dried blood on his shirt, but otherwise he was fine. It was as if he was never hurt in any way. I comma I was stabbed, he whispered, I'm sure of it. Yes, it was a horrible wound. He looked up at Asia, wide-eyed and confused, if I was just a few more seconds late, I may not have been able to heal you. What are you saying? He was still out of breath as he asked, T that was a lethal injury, what do you mean by healing me? 
Asia simply gave her new brother a smile, just relax for now. You should speak so much after exerting so much. Naruto flinched a little when Asia touched his knee. You scraped your knee pretty bad and you still have many scratches on your back, so please bear with me for now. Naruto's eyes widened as he watched Asia's hands suddenly illuminate a bright green glow. She hovered her hands over his knee, and he couldn't believe his eyes when the wound started to heal at an impossible rate. Through his eyes, he saw that it was beyond healing. It was as if Asia was creating new tissue for his body and was regenerating his flesh. Within seconds, the large gouge was completely healed and looked perfectly fine. There was absolutely no scarring. Even the skin tone appeared to be the same as before. In awe, Naruto turned to look at Asia. H how did you do that? Asia had never looked more angelic as she gave Naruto her brightest smile. It's God's gift to me. Naruto felt his pain vanish as Asia worked her magic along his body. The pure light healing all his wounds. I will be forever grateful to the Lord for giving me such powers, and I am sure he'd be happy that I could use it heal you, Naruto-san. Naruto sat up fully, feeling even better than normal. Amazing, he muttered with a small chuckle, you're amazing, Asia-chan. The girl blushed and shook her head shyly, T thank you. Wait a second, started Naruto as he looked around, how did you even know I was here? Asia pursed her lips, I had a terrible feeling when you left, so I started to pray for you. Naruto sat closer to the girl as she continued, I was worried, and miraculously, I was spoken to. She smiled as she thought back, I heard the voices of angels, and they were calling out to me. I closed my eyes and prayed as hard as I could, and I felt their light wrap around me. It was amazing and when I finished my prayer and opened my eyes, I appeared next to you. Naruto stared at with his jaw slightly detached. W what? From the short time he spent with Asia, he was under the impression that she was a kind, innocent and good girl, and he wouldn't expect her to lie, but it was hard to believe any sort of divine intervention was involved. Are you sure you didn't just follow me? Oh no, of course I didn't. It was really God who saved you, and I'm so glad he did it through me. She bit her lip again, I was scared, though, whispered Asia. You were lying there alone and there was blood everywhere. If you were left there another minute, it would have been too late. He couldn't help but smile and pat his sister's head, well it doesn't matter. You saved my life, Asia Chan. You're like my guardian angel. Asia blushed again, thank you. She looked around, but Naruto san, do you have any idea what happened? What are these piles of ash all around? Naruto's eyes widened as he quickly looked around, and was stunned to suddenly remember Hiro and all his men. They were all slaughtered and dismembered by the crazy man, but their bodies were all gone. He slowly stood and stepped closer to one of the piles of ash, praying to God above that it wasn't Hero or his men, but he knew it was for naught. It was as if something scorching hot reduced the bodies to nothing but ash, and he wasn't sure if it was the crazy man. Asia Chan, he started as the girl looked up at him, was I alone when you got here? Did you see anyone else? The girl just shook her head, her big green eyes confused, no. You were the only one here. Naruto rubbed his head, hum, I knew I saw someone else here. His eyes widened, Rias, I saw her here. Asia stepped closer to her brother, Naruto san, we should head back home now. Your wounds are healed, but your body still went through a lot and you need to rest. He could only nod, okay, let's go home. The sun was setting after a long day, and Rias stared at the bright orange orb as it sank into the horizon, sighing as the soft evening wind cooled her face. Biting her lip and holding a shaking hand to her chest, she tried to ease her mind to no avail. She couldn't stop the anxiety bubbling up from her heart and couldn't stop imagining possible scenarios in her mind, all of them haunting her. Fortunately, some repeated knocking broke her out of her stupor. Come in, she whispered, almost hoping that whoever was behind the door wouldn't hear. The door opened and a concerned Akano stepped into the room. Rias, are you okay? For the past hour, the queen had been trying to get her king to let her in and she knew something was wrong. Sona left, but she is really worried about you. Akano slowly approached Rias by the window and gently held her hand, Rias, please tell me what happened. Rias finally made eye contact with her best friend and managed to whisper, I don't know. Akano bit her lip before she led Rias over to their usual couch, you just teleported away after your familiar reported to you, so something had to have happened. Did something happen to Naruto-kun? It took another few moments of silence before Rias spoke. I told you that I use my familiar to look after Naruto, right? Akano nodded. She reported that Naruto was heading to his clinic, and he stumbled straight into a massacre. She didn't see who or what it was, but someone killed a bunch of people near Naruto's clinic, and he walked right into it. 
The problem was that whoever killed those men were still there, and she knew that Naruto was in danger. That's when you teleported to him. Rias nodded. Yes, I went there as quickly as I could. Who was the attacker? Asked Akano, really hoping that it wasn't devils sent by the underworld. It was some rouge exorcist, I think. The queen was relieved and exhaled a breath she didn't know where she was holding. He was using a light sword and blessed bullets. I guess those thugs somehow angered him and he decided to kill them. Rias balled her fists, when I got there, the man was toying with Naruto. And he stabbed Naruto through the back with his sword. W what? muttered Akano, so what did you do? I blasted that bastard, hissed Rias, almost glowing red. I wanted to kill him, but he ran before I could finish him off. Naruto kun, did you turn him? Rias hugged her knees and shook her head, I wanted to. I had my bishop piece ready, but it didn't work. Naruto was bleeding out, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't heal him or change him into a devil. It was like my powers were completely negated by something. S so what happened to him? S something happened. Out of nowhere, a ray of holy light blasted down from the sky, and I thought it was some angel who wanted to attack me, but I think it was Naruto's new adopted sister. Akano could only utter her small cries of surprise. She wasn't an angel, but I think she has a sacred gear. She was scared of me, but it didn't stop her from rushing to Naruto. Her sacred gear must have some healing powers, but she managed to completely heal Naruto's stab wound. Then what happened? I had to get out of there, so I wiped the girl's memories of me and teleported back here. But why? asked Akano as she scooted closer to Rias, why did you run? I comma I think Naruto may have saw me when I attacked the man. I saw me using my powers and my wings. I don't know how he would react, and I didn't, I didn't want to find out. Rias wiped her welling tears from her eyes, it would be different if I managed to turn him into a devil, at least that way it would be secured. Now I have no idea if something is wrong with my evil pieces or Naruto is somehow being watched by heaven. It is no coincidence that his adopted sister would show up the same day he is attacked, and she just so happens to be able to travel by light and heal wounds. Rias stared at her hands, I wanted to erase Naruto's memories as well, but for some reason my powers don't seem to work on him. Akano sighed, well, this sure got complicated, regardless, I can't stay here and wait. Rias dried her tears and tried to compose herself, tonight I'll go to Naruto's place as we planned. I'll meet his new sister and just act like I usually do. He might now have seen me that clearly since he was injured and nearly unconscious. I'll just act as if nothing happened. Okay, but what else would you do? Rias stared at her best friend, I have to try it again. I don't know why my bishop piece didn't work before, but I'll try again. If it doesn't work then I'll try my knight piece or my rook piece. Either way, I will not lose Naruto like this. Akano couldn't help but worry for her king, he's mine. The knight seemed unusually silent, and his home felt cold and bleak. In the hum of on the television in the background, Naruto closed his eyes, trying to remember. It was natural to not recall recent memories after such traumatic experiences, but he stared into his own brain and saw no anomalies. It was possible that he could have been hallucinating, but it was far too distinct a memory, he could still hear her voice and feel her lips tickling his ear. He could hear her words comforting him, and her warmth protecting him. She was there, that much he was certain. Why did she leave? Naruto sighed, Asia Chan didn't see anyone there but I remember seeing them both at nearly the same time. Dear God, I have no idea what is going on anymore. Damn, should I tell Rias about what Asia can do? Rubbing his temples for the tenth time, Naruto silently groaned. He had spent the past few hours flipping through the local news outlets, but none of them even mentioned the massacre. It all happened under a busy overpass, and there was no doubt in his mind that there would have been cries of pain and anguish. Blood was splattered all over and nearly flooded the area. Severed limbs and mutilated bodies littered the ground, but somehow in the span of several minutes, all were gone. The bodies were replaced with piles of ash and the blood vanished. Should I call the police? They'll never believe me. E excuse me, Naruto-san? Naruto's train of thought stopped with the voice of his sister breaking the deafening silence. Blinking away his blurriness, he turned to see the girl, and couldn't help but smile. Still dressed as a sister of the church, Asia looked adorable as she hesitantly looked at her plate. She was biting her lip, confused and concerned about what she had to do. What is it? He asked, clearly amused. The girl smiled rather sheepishly, what is the correct way to eat this? Clearing his throat, Naruto sat up and reached down for his burger, their dinner for the night since he had no time to cook. Okay, little sister, this could get a little messy. 
He held the thick burger with both his hands, these are always jam-packed. So always chomp down on it and try to not let the condiments fall out. With Asia staring at him, he opened his mouth as wide as he could and bit down into the sandwich, tearing out the bread, meat and veggies. Asia hesitantly held onto her own burger, oh okay. Naruto couldn't help but laugh as Asia did the best she could to eat the burger and desperately try to wipe the sauce from her chin and face. It was surprising to him that he could feel so relaxed and calm, albeit a little anxious, after such a crazy day, but his new sister's innocence was refreshing to see. His older sister was not lying when she said that Asia was just a little girl. Holding his chuckles, Naruto asked, how does it taste? With her mouth full, Asia nodded with a smile. He chuckled and ruffled her hair, that's good. Then the doorbell rang and Naruto felt his smile fade and his anxiety return with a vengeance. Leaving Asia to her dinner, Naruto stood and headed for the door, his heart rate slowly rising as he did. He felt the need to take a deep breath to relax before he turned the doorknob. As the door opened and the cold air seeped into the home, he smelled the usual sweet fragrance of his lover, and ultimately, he welcomed the sight of her angelic face. Hey you, he whispered as naturally as he could. Rias smiled and stepped into the house, reaching for his hand. Hey, sorry I'm late. Akano and the others had a lot to do with the club and it took longer than I expected. She leaned into him and delicately ed him on the lips, nibbling on his lower lip as she pulled away. I'll make it up to you later. Naruto shuddered and ed her back. You better. Closing the door, Naruto led Rias into their home for the past few months and smiled when they reached the dining room. Asia Chan, Naruto started as his new sister stood from her seat. This is Rias Grammary, my girlfriend. The girls stepped closer to each other, Rias easily towering over the smaller and younger girl. And Rias, this is Asia Chan. Rias smiled, as dignified and as elegant as usual, and extended a hand. It's nice to meet you, Asia San. I it's nice to meet you, too, Rias San. Asia shook Rias hand with as much enthusiasm as she did with Naruto. Naruto smiled at them, okay, let's eat, as Asia sat down. He pulled Rhea's seat out for her, I got you a burger and some fries, I didn't have time to cook today. Really? She asked carefully, I thought you wanted to cook today, what happened? Naruto stared at Rhea's, not noticing any rise in heart rate or twitches, nothing really, just a long day and I'm tired. He looked at Asia and simply smiled, hoping she caught on, which she did and remained silent, how was your day today? Rhea's shrugged as she snacked on some fries, nothing much, just helped Akano and Kaneko at the schoolhouse. The exams are coming up, and unlike somebody, she winked at Naruto before she continued, we actually need to study. Akano is still helping them now, actually. Most of them are ready, but Issei still needs quite a bit of help. He's easily distracted, Naruto rolled his eyes at that, it took me all afternoon to teach him all the math he doesn't understand. I barely had enough time to eat, so I'm glad I managed to come here tonight at all. S so, Naruto cleared his throat, so you didn't even get to leave the schoolhouse until now? Rias shook her head with a tiny pout, nope, it's been a long day. She smiled, but that's enough about me. She turned and smiled at Asia, how was your first day in Japan, Asia San? The girl smiled timidly, her shyness showing after meeting someone new. I it was good. Naruto San is very kind and has prepared everything for me. That's good, otherwise we'd have to punish him, Rias winked at Naruto, who merely chuckled. So Naruto hasn't told me yet, but where are you originally from? Italy, Asia answered with a fond and nostalgic smile, I grew up in a small church in Vatican City. That is actually where I met Gri, I mean mother. Naruto wasn't paying much attention, but he thought he saw Rias flinch at the story. I got into some trouble with my church, but mother helped me and adopted me as a daughter. Asia smiled gratefully, and she said that I'd love life here in Japan, so she sent me here to live with Naruto-san. That's nice, and I'm sure you'll love it here, and if you need any help with anything, Please feel free to tell me. I'd love to have another girlfriend, especially since you're Naruto's sister now. Asia smiled happily and nodded. Hi, thank you, Rias san. Rias simply smiled back before she turned to Naruto, but you never told me your mother lived in Vatican City. Really? Naruto scratched the back of his head. I thought I did. Yeah, my parents are both from there. Mom is a teacher over there and volunteers a lot for the church. Dad mainly works on the Weather Channel but he still volunteers to cook for the church children every week. Asia nodded, yes, dull, I mean D-Dad is a very good cook. I always love it whenever he would cook for us at the church. Rias gave a small smile, that sounds really nice. Dinner went on, and Asia managed to get used to eating her burger. 
As the small talk and casual discussions went on, Naruto couldn't help but use his eyes to look at his girlfriend. For the life of him, he couldn't shake the peculiar, unpleasant feeling from his thoughts. The more he tried to remember, the more vivid the memory became. He wasn't sure if his brain was piecing together his imagination and showing what he wanted to see, but he kept seeing the dark and red energy that surrounded Rias. It felt powerful, but very dark and frightening. But as he looked at her, he didn't see anything out of the ordinary, and when she smiled at him, all he could feel for her was adoration. Thank you for the meal, happily chirped Asia, obviously much more comfortable with her new family and friends. Rias gave the girl a kind smile, you must be tired after such a long day, so how about we call it a night? Yes, that's a good idea. Naruto stood and started to clean up, and stopped Asia when she tried to help. Nope, it's getting late, Asia-chan. I'll handle this and you should go get ready for bed. The bathroom is yours to use, so go get cleaned up and get some rest. Hey, are you sure? Naruto patted the girl's head, of course I am. The girl smiled and bowed a little, okay, thank you for everything, Naruto-san, Rias-san. Naruto merely smiled along with Rias, good night. Rias gently patted Asia on the shoulder, you need sleep. Good night. Asia's eyes became tired, so tired that she could barely stand. I am really tired, she managed with a smile, good night. With that, she stepped into her room and closed the door, instantly asleep. Rias and Naruto silently cleaned up the table, wiping away the crumbs and throwing away the trash. For the first time in their relationship, they couldn't speak to each other, and it was painfully obvious. Even when their hands touched while cleaning, they didn't react. It scared both of them that there wasn't that spark of passion between them, and they both felt a painful sting in their hearts. Rias was the first to push through, Asia Chan is a really nice girl. Yes, she is. Naruto smiled at his lover, hoping the day would finally end and normality would return. I'm glad the two of you hit it off, she is a girl, so it's better for her to have some girlfriends. He turned to reach for some towels to dry his hand, but he continued. Mom says she's a smart girl, but it will take some time for her to get used to Japan, especially with school. I'll help her as much as I could, but after tonight, I think she might like you more than me. He chuckled, you know, if yo. Naruto was silence when Rias suddenly wrapped her arms around him from behind. Hey, he whispered as slowly turned until she was hugging his front, is something the matter? She shook her head and snuggled into his chest, it's just been a very long day. He wrapped his arms around her and hugged her tightly, ing the top of her head. Then let's go to bed. He gently ran his fingers through her hair, whispering as gently as he could to her ear. Do you want some warm milk to help you sleep better? She shook her head before she stared up at him, looking deep into his eyes. No, but I want you. He smiled softly, you know I'm yours. Their lips slowly met in a gentle caress, instantly feeling warmer. As her arms s around his neck, he pulled her close and slowly led her to the bedroom. Her intoxicating scent filled his senses as her tongue worked its magic on his, twisting and swirling around as they shuffled into their room. Naruto nearly groaned when she briefly broke the to shut and locked the door. He watched as she turned to stare at him, her eyes displaying her wanton hunger. Falling onto his bed, he was mesmerized as Rias slowly strutting over to him, her hands teasingly tossing away her uniform corset, her fingers unbuttoning her shirt in an excruciatingly erotic way. He felt a shiver run down his spine when she licked her lips and her bodacious s bounced free from their confinement. He knew he had to catch up as Rias kicked away her skirt and tossed her panties on his lamp. The lighting shining through the purple lace bathed the room in an exotic purple curtain of light, making Rias appear even more alluring. She leaned down for him, tangling her fingers in his golden locks, and ed him chastely on the lips. He could only watch her perfect features sway from side to side as she pulled down his pants and tore off his shirt. Like many times before, his manhood stood at attention to Rias, and throbbed as she gently rubbed against it. Breathless, he moaned as Rias freed his heated member, and nearly gasped when she knelt between his legs. Slowly, she stroked him, her hands somehow warm and cold at the same time. He shuddered and gasped as she silently stared at his magnificence, stoic and calm. Then as gently and seamlessly as ever, she gently planted it on his throbbing head, making Naruto reel his head back. Our Rias, he mindlessly uttered. Naruto? She whispered as she dragged her soft lips along his shaft, occasionally licking him with her wet tongue. Do you remember what you promised me? He could only nod, his body convulsing at her touch and s. You promised that you will only ever belong to me, only to me. She gave the head a strong lick before asking, do you remember? Why yes, 
Of course I do. She softly smiled and gave his shaft another, can you promise me something else? He barely managed to nod, a anything. She dragged her tongue along the bottom of his shaft, wet and moist. Promise me that we'll be together forever and you'll never leave me. Feeling his climax approaching, he grunted and nodded, I promise. Squeezing his length between her s, Rhea slowly pushed Naruto only his back, rubbing herself on him as she climbed on top of him. He watched in breathless anticipation as she aligned herself with him, her wetness dripping on his throbbing heat. Feeling his head prod at her entrance, he moaned, but was silence when she suddenly leaned down and captured his lips. I, she whispered in between s, I can no longer live without you. In one fell swoop, Rias welcomed Naruto into her, and they both moaned into their, now complete and whole, they moved in sync and rhythm. His hands caressed their way from her shapely waist to her plump bottom, his fingers sinking into her soft flesh as she bouncing on top of him. Inevitably, he felt the unstoppable urge to release himself. Ah Rias, he urgently muttered, I, I'm almost there. Me, too, she whispered against his lips, let's do it together. Rias. Naruto cried out as he emptied himself inside his lover, his pleasure coming in wave after wave. As he wrapped her arms tightly around her as she moaned into his chest, her womanhood convulsed in burning pleasure, further urging him on. His essence seeped deep into her, slowing as they calmed from their bliss. Still shuddering from pleasure, they held each other closely, their breathing in sync, and slowly fell into a serene silence. His heart rate and breathing slowly calmed by hearing her heartbeat and breathing, and he gave her a deep on the lips. That was amazing, he whispered into the, smiling against her lips, still physically connected, he lightly moaned when Rias sat up and straddled his waist. He felt his essence leaked from Rias and run down his shaft, and it excited him once more. He gently held onto her legs and smiled up at her, are you in the mood for round two? But much to his surprise, there were tears welling in Rias' eyes. Hey, what's wrong? She gently held Naruto down by the shoulders and leaned down to him softly, please don't hate me. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise when a dark red light burst into life on his chest, and could only watch in stunned silence as it transformed into a chess piece. It was a night piece, he absentmindedly recognized, and it was burrowing itself into his chest. He felt Rhea's tears fall on his face, but he could pay no attention to anything but the dark light slowly seeping into his body. But suddenly, he felt the energy built up inside him vanish, and the light was forced out of him. A burst of power shook the bed and knocked over his lamp, and he looked up at the crying Rias, who was now crying harder. Still in silence and awe, he saw the night piece suddenly morph into a rook piece, and once again it tried to seep into his chest. It was burning hot, and his chest was in pain. Our Rias, he managed, s stop. She sobbed as tears flowed freely, and he watched as her eyes turned blood red. Rias, he groaned out as best as he could with his chest being compressed, it hurts. Rias was opening crying and sobbing as she forced the piece as hard as she could into Naruto. Despite everything, she flared her power and tried as hard as she could. Naruto's eyes were locked onto her, and only grew wider and black, bat-like wings sprouted from her back. The bed started to shake under the pressure, and Rias continued to push her power into him, but the more she forced it, the more she was forced back, until it was too much, and it overflowed. A flash of red and black energy ignited and blasted from between Naruto and Rias. This time, the entire house shook violently, the floorboards cracked, the windows blew open, and Rias was blown back into the wall. Feeling drained and weakened, Rias bit her lip until it bled, tears still marring her face, why is it not working? Holding his chest in pain, Naruto coughed as he sat up on his broken bed. He stared at Rias, taking in her, her red eyes and black wings. And Rias saw the one thing she most dreaded seeing in Naruto's eyes, fear. N Nar. She didn't even finish calling his name, and she saw him flinch. It broke her heart. Without another word, a red magic circle appeared underneath her, and Rias vanished from the room, leaving Naruto alone on his bed, still wide-eyed, in pain, and horrified. In deafening silence, the night slowly vanished and the bright sun rose from the horizon. The sunlight casted a coat of warmth over the town of Kuo, but did nothing but extend the shadow that towered over Naruto. Laying in the darkness that lived hidden from all else, all he could feel was the pain coming from his chest. Pulsating and bloodied, Naruto watched as his body worked to heal the wound, but the pain was only getting worse. Not the physical pain, but the pain that came with his heart being in pieces. Never in his short life had he ever imagined that the woman he loved would hurt him so much, 
and he hadn't even considered the possibility that the first women he had ever fallen in love with would turn out to be some kind of biblical monster. It didn't matter how hard he tried to rationalize his thoughts. His eidetic memory seemed to enjoy showing him the black wings that sprouted from her back, and the sight of her green eyes slowly bleeding to blood red. For hours, he stared through his window, watching the moon fade away into the brighter light, wondering what had happened to him. And it was after hours of painful thinking and sullen whining of his own powerless body that he came to realize that there was no way for him to rationally deduce what happened. His mind siphoned through all the words he read in all his medical science and biology books, and none could even remotely explain what he saw. It wasn't until morning, as he watched the sun rise from what seemed to be another world, did he think back to his early learning. As his eyes shifted to the high sky, he thought back to his lessons at church. A demon, Naruto pondered, silently in pain, could she actually be a demon? In the past few days, it was as if Naruto's accumulated scientific knowledge was useless. It was painfully clear that science could not explain many things, like Asia's healing powers or his own eyes, and he couldn't help but think back to his parents' words. With tense hands, Naruto managed to reach for his phone. The dial tone was uncomfortably loud after such a long silence, and it took four rings for the other side to answer. Hello. Hello, mom, his voice came out raspy and aged. Naruto? came the voice of Griselda, much more tender than usual. Are you alright? You sound terrible. Mom, he started with a fearful pause. Do demons actually exist? A long silence came between the call, and Naruto felt his own anxiety increase and the silence become more and more unbearable. Please tell me, mom. I need to know. Did something happen to you? Naruto could no longer take it and slammed his fist into the wall. Just tell me. He let his anger and frustration pour out and threw the nearest pillow across the room. Do demons exist? Griselda's breathing was calm and composed. Yes, they really do exist. Naruto bit down on his lips and shut his eyes, the pain in his heart throbbing with every beat. Demons, which I usually call devils are real. I have seen many in my life. As I have always taught you, there is a natural balance in the world between light and darkness. Devils are creatures of the dark, and as members of the church, we stand by the pure light, God and his angels. Rubbing his eyes before opening them, Naruto furrowed his brows as he spoke, are they evil? Devils are creatures of greed and desire. They tempt humans to do evil in order to spite our lord. They're our natural enemies, so yes, they're evil. All of them, he whispered, almost fearfully. Naruto, what is going on? I know something must have happened. Did you, encounter a devil? Griselda concern was clear in her voice. You can tell your mother anything. If you really did encounter a devil, I can help you. Sorry, mom. Naruto cleared his throat, I need to go. I'll talk to you later. Without letting his mother continue, Naruto ended the call, and silence once again became overbearing. Running his hands roughly through his hair, he grunted in frustration and threw his phone on his bed. He pointlessly wandered in his room, turning on the balls of his feet, trying to find a semblance of normalcy in a wreck of twisted reality. Falling to his desk chair, he slowly calmed by listening to the ticking of his clock, his heart rate slowing with each passing second. As his frustration and anger faded away with the testosterone levels in his blood, he closed his eyes. For the first time in a long while, Naruto tried to clear his mind. Very naturally, he fell to his knees by his bedside. Dear Lord, he spoke in his mind as his fingers interlocked, please guide this lost lamb of yours. I don't know what to do, I don't know what is going on anymore. It had been years since his last prayer, but it felt like confiding in an old friend. My life has been flipped upside down in the last two days. It's all happening so suddenly. First Asia Chan comes to live with me, and on the same day, I get stabbed by that crazy person. I don't know if one of your angels saved me, but somehow Asia Chan appeared next to me and used some heavenly healing power to save my life. These things I can learn to accept, but why did Rias have to turn out like this? Naruto grunted and kneed his bed in anger, I love her, I truly love her. Why did the one person who I thought of as my angel turn out to be a devil? He shook his head and gritted his teeth, please, God show me what I should do. All was silent, and no mystical calling appeared before him. I know, I know Rias isn't evil, it might be stupid of me to think that, but, but my gut tells me that she didn't want to hurt me, and I know beyond a doubt that she loves me. All this time, we were so happy. I know some will just call me naive and stupid, but I am in love with her. I love her so much that even now I want to hold her. But, damn it, Naruto slammed his fist down onto his bed and cracked his bed frame with his knee. I don't know what to do. 
At the silence, Naruto cried out in frustration, Please, just give me a sign. At his call there was a knock on his door. En Naruto-san, are you okay? Asia-chan, Naruto managed to whisper. I'm sorry, Asia-chan, but I don't feel very good right now. Give me a few minutes. Much to his surprise, his door opened and he saw Asia stand by his door. She looked oddly determined, but that quickly vanished when she squeaked and turned at the sight of his ness. Naruto quickly put on his bathrobe, feeling awkward more than surprised. S sorry. Asia managed to break the silence first. I got a bad feeling just now that you needed my help, so I couldn't wait. Naruto's eyes widened for a second, did, did she just hear my prayer? With a shaky hand and hesitant eyes, Asia pointed to his chest. Just let me heal that wound for you. The older blonde merely sighed and sat down on his bed, okay, sure. The girl smiled as she approached her brother, but frowned when she saw the wound. She quickly hovered her hands above his chest and channeled her focus until a soft green glow covered the bloodied area. Once again, Naruto watched in fascination as the damaged cells regenerate before his eyes. In just a few seconds, the pain was completely gone and there wasn't even a red spot left on his chest. Thank you, Asia Chan. She smiled up at her brother, her green eyes twinkling with innocence and joy. You don't have to thank me. Aren't you going to ask me what happened? Naruto fixed his robe and stared down at the floor. Asia shook her head, it's none of my business, all I care about is making sure you're not hurt. Naruto smiled at his sister and ruffled her hair, and the two new siblings sat together in silence. He turned to look at Asia, and found her small smile to be very comforting. She was simply staring off into space, her lips curled into a natural grin, and after an entire night of confusion and anger, he finally found peace. In Asia's presence, he could finally relax and calm his mind. She really was like his own guardian angel. Which was why he felt comfortable talking to her. Do you believe in the devil? Seeing the shocked expression on Asia's face, Naruto quickly corrected himself. I mean do you believe that the devil actually exists? Asia's face rested into her natural smile as she nodded, of course. Naruto was surprised at her quick answer, I get that it's what we grew up learning, but how are you so sure? Because I met one myself. Wait, what? Asia tilted her head in confusion. Did mother never tell you why I was expelled from the Vatican City Academy? Naruto slowly shook his head, no, and I never asked. But it dawned on Naruto just how strange it was for any school to expel someone as angelic and sweet as Asia. He couldn't even imagine the girl stepping on an ant, much less do anything that would result in expulsion. If you don't mind telling me, what happened? Asia stared down at her lap, I was expelled because, because I saved the life of a devil. Naruto was utterly lost for words. I had never been anything but grateful for having my powers. The girl stared at her hands as she spoke, ever since I was a little girl I had the power to save lives, and I knew it was the Lord who gave me this gift. So I never once refused to heal anyone, no matter their background. I healed everyone from school children to convicts in prison, even if the church elders sometimes don't let me act on my own. Naruto smiled and nodded, you will be an amazing doctor, Asia Chan. Asia's smile brightened, I don't consider any life different from any other. A life is a life, and no matter who that life belongs to, it is worth saving. She bit her lower lip, but that isn't what the elders think. So one day when I found a man bleeding and dying on the ground, I went to save him. I didn't stop, not even when I saw his black wings and felt his demonic power. Naruto couldn't help but reach out and held onto Asia's shaking hand. I didn't stop because I knew he needed my help, and even though he is someone who stands against our Lord, I know that if the Lord was in my position, he would do the same thing. Because no matter what, he considers even devils and fallen angels his children, and he would do anything to save their lives. Asia Chan, the girl turned and gave Naruto another smile, devils are real, Naruto-san. And like many humans they are merely poor souls who have lost their ways. And I only wish that the elders thought the same way I do. She grew red and shyly added, I don't mean to sound so arrogant, though. The older brother shook his head, no, you're completely right. Thank you. So, started Naruto, still holding onto Asia's hand. You think it is possible for devils to be good? Is it possible for them to love? Asia stared at her brother with her emerald eyes and merely smiled, of course, everyone is capable of love. Naruto sighed with a soft smile, thank you, Gabriel, listen to me. The foundations of heaven shook under the immense power of the seraph. Gabriel glared at her older brother as her ten wings vibrated with power, sending tremors throughout the holy land. 
It took Michael nearly all he had to hold Gabriel in place, and it was getting increasingly difficult to not get scorched by her light. This has gone on long enough. Gabriel flared her power and everyone in her vicinity was nearly blinded by the holy light. I don't care what you say, Michael. That devil tried to turn our little brother into a devil. Do you have any idea what that could have done to him? His powers haven't even begun to sprout, and she could have destroyed his soul doing what she did. But she didn't. Michael was forced to retaliate, and his own twelve golden wings soothed the violent white light that threatened to destroy their home. And she didn't know any better, Naruto is fine, and there is still a chance for this alliance to work out. Angels in heaven all fled from the clash of their leader's power, and soon the two seraphs were alone in their personal level of heaven. We don't need this alliance. Gabriel tore away from one of her brother's wings, but was quickly held back again. All we need is for Naruto to stay safe. He is a cradle of father's power, our legacy. When he matures, we will once again become the greatest power in existence. And you know that doesn't mean anything, Michael had enough and flared his own full power. Golden light overwhelmed the white and Gabriel was forced to step back. Calmly, Michael placed a caring hand on Gabriel's shoulder and gently held her other. Dear sister, you know that we need this alliance. If what father predicted comes to pass, Naruto cannot face it alone. Gabriel refused to meet her brother's eyes, but he continued. We have a chance to bring our entire family back together, just as it was in the beginning. If we want to continue our legacy, to keep father's creation alive, we need the support of all of his children. Gabriel calmed her power, and Michael released her, but she still refused to look at him. It shouldn't be all for Naruto to carry. This responsibility falls upon us, not our little brother. And I cannot for one second longer leave him in the dark and not tell him anything. Tears welled in her eyes when she finally turned to glare at Michael. He's just a child, and he's living in the middle of a town festered with devils and fallen angels. He doesn't know who he is and what they are. And I am sick of lying to him about it. Fine. We will tell him everything and send in our people to protect him. Michael sighed, and raised his hand when Gabriel tried to interrupt. But not right away. Give me one week. In one week I will have Griselda tell him of our world, and of our current situation. The archangel stared at his sister, and if you feel he is ready, you can tell him of his heritage and who he really is, but only when you feel he is ready. I will trust your judgment. Gabriel managed a smile, thank you, brother. As for protection, I do not want you or Griselda handling it. Michael stopped Gabriel's interruption again, regardless of power, I still value this alliance above all else, and you and Griselda are too high profile and will be instantly recognized. We will send in some of our rookie holy sword users, and I believe two of them are already close with Asya Argento. Gabriel conceded, fine, I will organize that right away. Make sure that they know of what we are trying to do. Unless Naruto is put in immediate danger by Rias Gremory or any of her peerage, they are not to antagonize them whatsoever. Michael looked stern at this, this is the direct order of the archangel, and I expect everyone to follow this rule. Gabriel huffed, but Michael wasn't finished. If anything, everyone involved on our side of the board will try to protect Naruto and Rias Gremory's relationship. Their bond and potential marriage is the only bridge between us and the devils. I understand, muttered Gabriel. Michael sighed with a smile, good, he fondly ruffled Gabriel's hair, and poked her forehead, smiling at her pout. Now stop throwing tantrums and go make sure our little brother will be fine. Hi. For the first time in a long time, Akano had no idea how to talk to her king. In all her years as a devil, she understood Rias more than anyone. They were sisters in everything but blood, and there were no limits between them. But Akano found herself standing in front of Rias' door, her hands shaking and unable to open the door. She found herself afraid of what she'd find behind the door, and it that realization scared her more than she expected. But nonetheless, with the worry of everyone else in their peerage on her shoulders, Akano gently stepped into Rhea's room. Hey, whispered the queen as she slowly approached her king, are you hungry? I made your favorite. There was no answer, and in the darkness of the room, Akano only heard faint breathing. It wasn't until she was standing by Rhea's bedside that she saw her best friend. Her eyes were as red as her hair, and the light, that sparkle that Akano adored was no longer there. Wrapped in a cocoon of a thick red comforter, Rias trembled. It broke Akino's heart to see Rias so broken. Rias, Akino whispered, but once again there was no answer. Tears welled in Akino's eyes as she carefully sat down on the bed, gently scooting close to Rias. Please, talk to me. Tears started to fall from Rias' eyes, I lost him. Her voice was raspy and aged, 
nothing like her usual confident and vibrate self. I lost him, she whispered again, her voice now trembling. No, Akano sobbed as she wrapped her arms around Rias, in the side of her head, no, everything will be okay. You know that Naruto loves you, and you will never lose him. Rias shut her eyes as tears flooded out, her shoulders now shaking as she sobbed, I lost him, she cried as her power flared out of control, but Akano held on. He's scared of me, Akeno. When he saw me, he saw a monster. Rhea's hands were shaking and she could barely hold onto her blanket. And he's right to see that. You are not a monster, Rias. Akano was very stern, and Naruto is wrong if he sees that in you. After a long silence, Rias whispered, I hurt him, Akano. Huh? Akano held Rias closer, what do you mean? None of my powers worked on him, none of them. The tears were ever flowing from Rias' eyes, and she didn't even bother to wipe them dry. I tried everything. I tried to wipe his memory of last night, I tried to use my night piece again, then my rook piece and then the bishop. No matter what I did, there is something preventing my power to enter his body. Rias choked back a loud sob as she burned away a part of her blanket. But I didn't stop. Akano bit her lip and Ed Rias' head, gently stroking her hair. You were desperate. I tried to force my power into him, and it really hurt him. Rias grabbed her hair and cried, I can't stop hearing his voice begging me to stop, whenever I close my eyes I see him looking at me, he looks so betrayed. She sobbed into her hands, trembling all over. I be betrayed him, she choked out. Akano once again had no idea what to say. I couldn't accept not spending my life with him, Rias managed between breaths, when I found out about the termination of my marriage contract, I was so happy. For the entire night I thought about how I can now marry the man I love and we can spend our lives together. Akano could only hold onto Rhea's hand as she continued, I actually started thinking of where we could live as a married couple. I dreamt of us buying our own little house in France or England, and of Naruto and I having our own clinic. She choked back a sob and turned away, I even started thinking about baby names. Akano wiped her own tears away and managed to speak, why you can still have that. Rhea shook her head, no, it is done. Sirzak Sama. Deep within the underworld, the Red Satan nodded at his wife. In the solitude of their home, Sirzak gently removed the lace headpiece from his wife's head, and ed her softly on the forehead, smiling as she sighed and rested against his chest. As much as he respected Grafia's decision to serve the Gremory family, he wanted her as his wife, especially during troubled times. Grafia gave her husband and before speaking, we may have stopped Okaasama from visiting Rias for now, but we don't have long. I know she is suspecting something, and soon she will find out. Sorry, I know this has been hard on you. Sirzex led his wife to their bed and gently removed her uniform. But we simply cannot let anyone get in the way of Rias and that young man. If it comes to it I can handle Okaasama, and I can even get Odo-sama to help as well. What we have to make sure is that no one from the underworld can discover what is really happening. The illusion barrier is still working, so no familiars will be able to see anything inside Kuo town but it is still a temporary solution. Rias doesn't have much time left, so we have to prepare our offer for heaven as soon as possible. It has already been done. The Satan lifted their covers and pulled his wife into his warm embrace, we will offer them Rias' hand in marriage to their own young hopeful. If everything goes right, I know they will be willing to negotiate with us. Grafia snuggled against her husband, that's good. Now we just have to wait for the right time. Sirzek smiled, I'll send a request to Michael for a meeting but we cannot let anyone know of our contact before then. I will coordinate with Ajuka and he will be able to cover for me then. After a moment of silence, Grafia decided to ask, how do you think everyone will react to this? Definitely very shocked at first, but they will learn to accept that this alliance is necessary, and this feud has gone on long enough. The original Satans are gone, and so should our hatred for heaven. We have to accept the fact that we all need each other if we are to survive what is coming. Sirzex then chuckled, and I know Okaasama will be very unhappy at first, but she did say that she wants Rias to find a good man, and I don't think we can ever find a better person than the Son of God. Grafia sighed, I don't think she meant that kind of goodness. She turned to face her husband, and we don't even know if Rias can manage to fix her relationship with him yet. We're lucky her magical power isn't powerful enough to permanently damage his soul, she would have started a full-scale war. Sirzex smiled, don't worry, I have a lot of faith in those two. But why? Because they're just like us, and we turned out perfectly. Grafia couldn't help but smile at her goofball husband. And let's not talk about them anymore. 
Grafia giggled as Sirzex pulled the covers over them, both trying to fulfill their promise to their little boy of giving him a sibling. Approaching the old schoolhouse, Naruto felt like he truly saw it for the first time. He had passed by the old building countless times in the few years he had been a student, but never had he truly paid attention to it. Now he felt a very peculiar presence from the gothic home of the occult research club. It was dark and gloomy, and no less intimidating than the dark energy he felt from Rias. But now he couldn't care less about it. Without thinking, he pushed his way through the door, not caring that they slammed into the walls. He knew he was loud, but he ran his way up the stairs, not once searching for other people. He knew Rias was on the top floor, in the office she had told him about so many times before. There was desperation behind each of his steps, as if he could lose Rias if he was too slow. So he didn't stop for anything, not even when a certain person he despised tried to stop him. You bastard! Turning into the main hallway, Naruto was confronted by Issei. What the hell did you do to Bucko? I have no time for you, muttered Naruto, his anger once again rising from within. The hell you don't! Issei pulled on Naruto's collar and glared at him, you made her cry. For the first time in his life, Naruto slammed his fist into someone else's body. He watched with clear distinction as his knuckles slam into Issei's abdomen, forcing his muscles aside and nearly straining his stomach. But the man still didn't let go, so Naruto punched again. This time he watched as his fist knocked Issei's jaw out of its socket, and as his anger rose, he kicked Issei away from him. Naruto-san, what are you doing? Naruto looked ahead and saw who he recognized as Kiba and Kaneko, both members of Rias Club. Let me see Rias. She is not feeling well right now, muttered Kaneko in a monotone voice. Let us deliver a message for you. Naruto grunted, but before he could argue, another voice broke in. Let him in, Kaneko chan, Kiba kun. Everyone turned to see Akano, whose eyes were still red. Rias needs to see him. Naruto immediately ran for the door behind Akano but he was stopped, what is it? Akano rested a hand on Naruto's shoulder, tears threatening to fall from her eyes, please forgive her, don't hurt her anymore. Naruto pushed past Akano, you don't need to tell me. Akano watched as Naruto enter Rias' room before she turned to the rest of the peerage, this is none of our concern. Kiba helped Issei to his feet, who was still nursing his face, there will be no meeting today, so everyone is free to take today off. Go home and leave them be. Akano raised her hand to stop Issei from speaking, this is an order, Issei-kun. Go home. A large red magic circle enveloped the group and everyone was teleported away from the old schoolhouse. Rias woke from her dream, and sobbed as reality rushed back. She clenched her blanket against her chest as her heart broke for the hundredth time in one night. She closed her eyes, almost desperate to return to her dream of still being together with the love of her life, and away from the nightmare that was her reality. In her dream, she never hurt him, never betrayed him. They still shared his little home, talking and making love, happy and content. He would hold her in his arms, her as tenderly as he possibly could, and whisper those three words in her ear. I love you. She sobbed as his voice rang in her mind, and desperately shook her head as tears fell from her closed eyes. She wanted her dream, but couldn't bear to wake again and discover such a reality. As if fate wanted to play a cruel joke on her, she woke whenever he whispered those words. Words she'd never hear in reality. She choked back a sob and whispered against her pillow, I love you so much. I love you. Rhea's cries echoed through the room, and she wanted to die. But it was quite miraculous that with only one touch, her reality could turn from her nightmare to her dream. Her eyes slowly opened, as if she was terrified of what she'd see. But the soft touches on her cheek encouraged her to go on. And when she opened her eyes and saw, tears once again fell. I'm sorry to wake you up like that but I didn't know what else to say. Gentle fingers wiped her tears dry as they refused to stop. I love you, Rias. And Naruto, she whispered, refusing to believe her eyes, refusing to fall for another dream that would break her heart. Please stop crying, he whispered as he gently caressed her cheek, please, I'm right here. Shaking badly, Rias slowly reached up and felt his warm hand on her cheek, Naruto? Refusing to let his own tears fall, Naruto planted of her forehead and pulled her into a tight hug. It's me, Rias. It's really me. He ran his fingers through her hair like he'd do every night in their bed and whispered gently in her ear, I'm right here. Rias let out a silent gasp, trembling in his arms. Naruto felt his heart clench, then break as she shook, Rias. Naruto, she whispered. He at her head, I'm right here. Out of desperation, 
Rias wrapped her arms around Naruto as tightly as she could and cried into his chest. Tears soaked his shirt as she sobbed against his chest. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. Naruto wrapped his arms around her just as tightly, in her hair again and again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she went on and on until her breath ran out, gasping loudly as she trembled. I'm so sorry. It's okay, he whispered, I'm fine. I didn't want to lose you, she choked out. Ever so gently, he loosened their hug and ed her cheek, you'll never lose me. He ran his thumb across her soft cheek, please look at me. Very hesitantly, Rias looked into the blue eyes she loved more than life, and sobbed when she did. I love you, Naruto. I won't ever h hurt you again. I made you a promise, remember? We'll be together forever, and I will never leave you. Brushing her tears away, he ed her as lovingly as he could on her lips. I love you, Rias. Rias held onto Naruto's shirt like a lifeline as she trembled. I will love you forever. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.